There's been plenty of hype about the Gold Coast Suns over the summer in what is expected to be a year when they surge into finals for the first time in the club's short history. After a disappointing loss in round one at the MCG against Melbourne, they returned to this magnificent stadium on the coast to continue to build on a home ground advantage. Hello and welcome to Metricon Stadium for the continuation of round two. It's the Gold Coast Suns taking on the St Kilda Football Club and both teams are looking to open their accounts for 2015. And if the Suns harbour any ambitions of playing finals this year, they must continue or an already impressive mode here at Metricon Stadium. We saw in 2013 they won six from 11 games. In 2014, they won seven from 11, including wins of 40 points or more over North Melbourne and Geelong. If the Suns are going to make Metricon Stadium a fortress for a team bound for finals, they must raise this level again and get it to at least nine from 11. But I'm sure that's not the major focus from Rodney E tonight. The major focus would be their intensity at the ball and the opposition. If we don't see that tonight, I'm sure the Saints will open their account tonight here. Yes, it's all about work rate for the Gold Coast Suns tonight, Alistair. It's a message, I'm sure, Barry Hall, the coach Rodney Ead, would have been hammering home to his group right throughout the week. But it is a classic night for footy. Let's hope we see a beauty. Yeah, we should see a beauty. But as you said, it's all about the Suns and their work rate tonight. They were really disappointing against Melbourne. And look, at, we've, we've pulled out some clips here that are really disappointing. you got the first half of football in round one in 2015. You've had all pre-season to think about it, and you, you get some efforts like this, just no intent to chase, tackle, put pressure on. The Melbourne Football Club, it just allowed them to, to score easily, move the ball just like this. And what it does is, it, it opens up the corridor for, for the Melbourne Footy Club, but yep. it puts pressure on the defence as well. The ball movement, and look how easy this is inside 50, and that's just purely from no pressure. Yeah, disappointing uh, given it was at the home of footy where they hope to play uh, the big finals uh, come September. But the talking point last week and after the match was all about Gary Ablett. He was uh, in the focus and on everybody's lips. Jack Viney really put him through the ringer. Oh, look, it was an old-fashioned performance from Jack Viney for me. It was grab your man and dub him in the ground. And, and that's what they, you know, the older players are instructed to do, hurt your man. I don't think Paul Roos would have been too worried if he'd give away free kicks or not. Let's test out his shoulder. He's the best player in the competition. And it's a carbon copy for what uh, might happen tonight, maybe. I've got no doubt that uh, Alan Richardson will have assigned uh, somebody to that job. And uh, we suspect it'll be their tackling machine, Mav Weller, who did a pretty good job uh, in the opening round on Ryan Griffin. Oh, he did a fantastic job. 15 possessions from Ryan Griffin. He's one of the better midfielders going round. But this, this guy's a little nugget. He's a tackling machine. He's their number one tagger, and look, he'll, he'll definitely get the job on Gary Ablett. When you get us assigned a job like this, though, it's just not a one-man job. He's going to need some help uh, from all of his midfield teammates. Well, Gary Ablett's very good at shaking the tag. He, this is very much a team tag, pretty much. Yes, well, has got the job on him, but he needs, he needs some help from his teammates. There's no doubt about that. Yes, it's going to be one of the great focuses uh, until Gary Ablett turns on that 33-35 uh, <laughs> possession game and uh, half a dozen goals. Maybe it be tonight. It would have been given Alan Richardson, coach of the Saints, nightmares throughout the week. Here he is with Alistair Lynch. Richo, thanks for joining us. You had a number of very good players last week, in particular Mav Weller's job on Griffin. Is he the automatic for, for Ablett today? Yeah, he'll go to Gary, particularly when Gary's in the midfield. Um, one, one thing Mav has done, uh, particularly in his time up here at the Suns, he's played a bit of footy in defence, so it may be we go all the way. We'll just wait and see how much time he spends forward versus how much time he's in the middle. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Ablett's shoulder last week. Is that something you've spoke about internally? Uh, no, not at all. No, the, the reality is that uh, he's an outstanding player, and you've got to be fairly mm. aggressive and fairly tight to make sure he doesn't get the footy. So he's going to—he's he's clearly going to come under some heat. But I mean, that's normal when you—when you're such a good player. From the outside, we look to St Kilda in the first 15 minutes. What will we see if St Kilda are really on tonight? Uh, we'll be really good with our pressure. Yeah. And see, um, we're, we're not sure whether it's going to be slippery out there or not. Uh, we don't want to be cute. We want to—we just want to give our forwards a chance and get it in. But primarily, we want to win the footy. And if they win the footy, put enormous pressure on them. There were some good signs with your key marking forwards last week. Bruce, in particular, so showed some really good signs. Yeah, he was good, Bruce. He works hard. Uh, Rui got going after half time. Uh, you know, he took a took a while to get going. I think we all understand why. But no, Bruce, he was uh, he was terrific. He's had a really strong uh, NAB Challenge campaign. Uh, he, he's, in, he's in reasonably good form. He's still a little bit inconsistent in front of goals, but we just can't question his effort. He's been strong. Thanks for your time today and good luck tonight. Yes, Josh Bruce was an absolute shining star last week, literally, because that's how high he got. <laughs> so, chance for our memory sets it out. They can all run it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, Colin Bruce! <laughs> 
<laughs> what a mark! He got up there and just sat there on top of the pack. <laughs> Off one step, too. And he's taken it over the top of three Giants defenders. I doubt you'll see a better one for the season. A lot of them didn't seem as if, as if they turned up, as if maybe they thought it was just going to happen. Dealing with football sometimes is it's a bit worse than dealing with racehorses. Obviously, I don't know the group extremely well yet, so I'm just getting more and more, and you can only judge people really on patterns of behaviour, and, um, and that seems to be a, a little pattern that may be emerging. Talent and potential are always dangerous words. You need to be able to... Uh, work, work consistently. You can't just do it in fits and starts. And they were probably the most disappointing losers of the round. They were very disappointing, and uh, you would have thought they were a lock. They're expected to make finals. They'll be very disappointed they don't make finals. No doubt it's Rockets trying to unload a bit of the pressure off the players. Oh, I still think a couple of years away, at least. Yeah, no doubt. I think, I think on the back of yesterday, maybe there's an over reliance on Gary. I think we've got a have to go past that. We still have him as a, as, as a great player, but I think we need to need to stand up. Yes, all eyes on the Gold Coast tonight, who are first on to Metricon Stadium, looking for their first win of the season after a poor performance at the MCG in Melbourne last week. I'm joined on the boundary line by Alistair Lynch and Barry Hall. And for a round two match, Lynchy, there's a lot of expectation on this. Yeah, there's a lot of expectation. Enormous focus on the Gold Coast Suns in particular. They were very disappointing last week, and they've got to bounce back in a big way today. Let's take a look at the Gold Coast uh, side, Baz. They've made a couple of changes. Yeah, there is a few changes. Uh, Mc McKenzie and Gurinja have been a bit omitted, so the axe has dropped. But a few but few really good hits. Lynch is back in. He's got a boss in there. The goal-kicking attack, there's no doubt about that. Lemons is a really good player as well. But it's all about the, in the midfield for me. That's where it's got to start. I reckon Ben Al's got to really stand up. Isaac Smith again. Gary Ellis going to be a big night for him. I'd expect him to have a bit, bit bigger influence than last week. Well, there's a side that uh, this man will be in control of today. Uh, last time you were coaching a Gold Coast Sun side or a uh, side on this ground as a home time coach was about two and a half decades ago, Rocket. Welcome. Uh, thanks very much, Jared. Yeah, it was a fair while ago, in 1991, so, um, yeah, it's a long time. But you went on to win a premiership in that year, so uh, it all goes well. But it was a tough week for you last week. How did you address it uh, at training? Um, yeah, we uh, I thought we addressed it heavily in review. Um, there was no sugar coating it. I mean, the effort just wasn't good enough. Um, you can't execute really if you don't have the effort. So that needs to be the baseline. So the players were good in the review, put their hand up and uh, challenge each other, and obviously addressed the training with a bit of intensity. It's game day. We've got to ask the question. Gary Abbott's uh, the shoulder was a massive focus all week. How is it? What do you expect tonight? Uh, I mean, it can't, it cannot be 100. percent Well, well, structurally he's fine. As you see, he landed on his got tackled to the shoulder. That didn't hurt him. You now he gets a bit irritable as all shoulders do. And everyone who has a shoulder operation that happens. A little bit of information here and there. Um, uh, but it doesn't inhibit him, so um, he feels a little bit at time, so maybe it's eroding his confidence a little bit uh, to a certain degree, but I mean, he still had 19 possessions, kicked a couple of goals. Another important player for you tonight is, is Tommy Lynch, back into the side. You must be rubbed to have him back. Yeah, very much so. Now, the three players were brought in are very good competitors. Seb, Seb Tape, Sean Lemon, young Sean, he's a, a really good young lad, and obviously Tom gives us a focus up, up forward, uh, and he is a competitor, so hopefully hopefully that can help us. Well, he was uh, the number one, number two in contested marks last year, so lots of pressure on him, but uh, you go nowhere unless your defensive mechanisms are at play, and they weren't last week. No, they're terrible. We worked hard over the summer, and they were, and they were really good in the NAP Cup. We're really pleased with their effort and the way they wanted to, to work that, but last week it was just non-existent, and... Uh, and if you don't bring if you don't bring that heat on the ball and the heat on the opposition, you're not going to win. Yeah, that's a, that was obviously your major focus, that intensity at the ball. Your kicking, uh, hitting targets hasn't been great either. Have you been able to address that this week, or is it something over a longer oh, period of time? We've worked heavily on over the summer last year. I think uh, the Gold Coast Suns were 17th for, for kicking efficiency. Yeah. We know it's an issue, uh, but we've worked heavily on it for three or four months. and still going to continue to do that. You couldn't get better conditions. No excuses for your boys tonight. No, there's not, Jared. There's not, Jared. It's. Uh, it, it's certainly a nice night. We might bat first if we win the toss. I would bat uh, definitely tonight, Rocket. Appreciate your time and uh, good luck. We'll uh, no doubt be chatting to you uh, throughout the evening. Thanks, guys. 
Rodney Ede, the coach of the uh, Gold Coast Suns. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Saints. Uh, Lynchy, they've also made a couple of changes. Yeah, two changes. Curran and Jack Billings come into the side. So Billings having a bit of an injury in recent times. will probably spend the majority of his time forward. Curran through the midfield. Montagna out with that knee injury or complications of the knee injury. And Templeton has been dropped. But there's a lot of good signs. I think Delaney down back, although he got four goals kicked against him, I think he played a pretty good game as well. Fisher obviously playing in game 200 is a key down there and Savage since crossing over from Hawthorne I think it was his best game so he, they'll be very uh, important across the back six they also need Bruce and uh, certainly Membry to complement Rewald up there too much pressure on uh, Nick Rewald so they need support they've got some pretty uh, high profile tools up there Baz well one in particular uh, in Nick Rewald but it was the smalls the way they kept the ball inside their forward half last week that uh, nearly grabbed them a victory yeah look they were outstanding I think they're ranked number three in the first round for having the, the time um, time of ball in forward half so it's an outstanding forward pressure and it just kept him in the game last week they they had a lot more opportunities the opposition but it just kept him in the game the pressure and Sammy Fisher celebrates his 200th match he's been a star for the Saints uh, I think we forget how good he's been actually I yeah. mean 2008 he's an All-Australian and won a couple of best and fairest he's a very uh, highly credentialed player and he'll be a key tonight and I think if the Saints are going to push the Gold Coast Suns tonight as we heard from their coach earlier, their intensity has to be right up. They have to be able to put a lot of pressure on and just trap the ball in the forward 50. And your final thoughts before uh, we take a break, Baz? Well, it's all about the Suns. We know what talent they got. It's about what effort they've got to bring tonight. It's all about the Suns for me. Okie doke. Uh, we're not far away from the opening bounce here on the Gold Coast. After this, Matty Campbell will take us through. It's the Gold Coast taking on the Saints. Welcome back to Metricon Stadium. Uh, players going through their final preparations. A couple of milestone games. We heard that Sam Fisher's 200th, also Jared Harbrow playing his 150th game tonight. He's played more games for the Gold Coast Suns than any other player. This is his 80th for the Suns tonight. So uh, he's been a very good uh, pickup for uh, the Gold Coast since coming from the Bulldogs. These two teams have met four times up here in Queensland. It's two apiece. St Kilda two, Gold Coast two, and You've heard from the gentleman downstairs about uh, it's all about the Gold Coast Suns showing something tonight, but uh, the Saints almost got themselves, well, they got themselves into a winning position last week, just couldn't quite close the deal up against the Giants, and that form's been franked pretty well today. So the Saints will be pretty confident here tonight. And it's about expectation, and that's why it's in many ways all about the Suns. Uh, the expectation pre-season was that yep. the Saints were uh, still in the rebuilding phase down the bottom of the ladder, looking to be a competitive unit. But the Gold Coast Suns, we're expecting them to push for finals. Some are expecting them to play... Top six. Serious uh, finals. And that wasn't the side we saw at the MCG last week. In fact, from a work rate perspective, St Kilda were miles in front of the Gold Coast. So they've got the better talent on their list just at the present time, the Gold Coast. And uh, there's a fair bit of it on display right now for the both sides. We're toss of the coin here. And it's going to be won by Nick Revolt to the right of screen. That coin is part of the official Anzac coin collection from the Royal Australian Mint. Only available with the Courier Mail, Gold Coast Bulletin, and other News Corp newspapers from this weekend. A great way to remember and celebrate the Anzac story as we build up to the 25th of April. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, massive occasion uh, that'll be. And a big occasion for the Saints and the Suns here tonight. As we saw the two captains, as you said, Jared, two superstars of the game. Too often these teams are reliant on uh, those superstars. They need youngsters to come up. Both uh, teams have got some super talent coming through the ranks. Just the consistency is the issue. What are you expecting from the Suns in the opening 10 minutes? Because uh, there is a potential for a facade. Just come out and uh, tackle maniacally, if that's uh, an appropriate description. Well, but if it doesn't last for the entirety of the match, then uh, Rodney has got bigger problems. I think we, there's no doubt what we're going to see from both teams. Uh, the tackling intensity is going to be right up. The attack of the ball is going to be uh, very, very high. Both teams desperate for a win. Certainly, there's an enormous amount of pressure on the Gold Coast Suns. If we don't see that 100% intensity, that man there may uh, order in the painters for Monday to put another coat on the... Uh, on the coach's box. Uh, Jared Gary Ablett starting forward. Well, there's five of them down there, so we'll wait and see uh, who breaks to the midfield. But at this stage, it looks as if uh, the great man Gary Ablett is going to start in the, the forward 50. 
Oh, is he going to sneak in? There is four in the middle, though, so he, they're going to start with uh, extra men in that forward half. Had a bit of push and shove to uh, assert their authority early. No, there he goes, top of screen. He's just sneaking around. He just the took wing. off. Yep. Watch his every move. And it looks like Geary's trying to get to him, but we're set to go round two. First night here on the Gold Coast for 2015, and Ablett scoots all the way round the back, and he comes in towards the back of the square, and he's just off of Swallow there at the moment. Swallow wins it. Prestia loses his footing. Over the top, Weller. Swallow dumps him. Ablett got booked to ball. First kick, very quick hands from Harbrow. Good Prestia, lead. Riscatelli, over the top of day. Martin can't keep it in. We'll have a throw in. Yeah, there's a bit happening off the ball. Uh, Billy Longer and Gary Abbott tangled in the centre circle as that play was flowing through to the forward half. Gaz already got a fair bit of attention from the opposition, as you'd expect. Smith, who was taken by Nunes for the Saints, and he's not going anywhere. We'll have a ball up 30 metres out from the Gold Coast goal. News oh, again. Touched. This time he got it away. It was touched off the boot. May using his body but forgot to take the ball. Then he wraps up Sard in the tackle. Pretty good tackle wow. at that. Ball does come out. Still going the Gold Coast. Weller down there as well. Benno can be dangerous here. Got it to Ablett somehow. Not a bad attempt from the little champ, but it's the first score of the night. Looks like Jared well Geary man. is uh, running with Gary Ablett. Yep. And he was in really good form last week. Yeah, that's a, uh, an interesting one. We heard pre-game that Mav Weller was going to go to him. So I'd imagine that may be just through the middle of the ground. Tipster just in play to Rus take it by Revolt. Rusatelli running with Armitage forward of the centre. Move it on. So nothing maniacal at the moment about their tackling. A little bit more structured. Free kick against Malcheski for the spoil over the shoulder. The Saints holding their own. Young Loney, fire, fire. off his line, told to go. He wants yep. to keep it on his left. And he can't keep it in play. And just had to return to get back on his natural left and just push the kick wide. Like the look of Loney Stay last right week, up. though. Sharp mover. There's Gary Ablett. There's shot. the test. There's one for the shoulder. Whacked him straight on the shoulder. He's going to get uh, sick of this. Sexton, give on the ups a good one. Riscatelli, risky handball from him. Well done, Hardrow. Releases Ablett. He's 55 from goal. He steps around Revolt, but Revolt puts a hand on it. It's a smothered ball. Martin got free. Got his hands over to Riscatelli. Standing start from him. High ball up towards Lynch. Fisher's in good position. Lynch gets rid of him. Play on the call. Lynch back. Looked up, had no support. Well, Lynch, he's been played in... The Gold kick, Coast forward kick. half at the back moment, back back. but they are incapable of uh, getting themselves a reasonable shot at the goal. Yeah, and that's probably because of the way the ball has gone. We just hear there is a free kick. It's out of bounds on the full. There was some confusion. It came off a Saints player, so it'll be Harley Bennell. And uh, you think he'd back himself from here? He's got a number of options. The boomerang. You'd reckon he'd open it up if you're going to do that, but he looks like he's shaping to kick a left foot round the corner. Where he is now. Now he is, definitely. Player! Left. Around the corner. Not to be for Bennell. Just to continue on from what you were saying, Jared, it's the quality of ball that's going into the forward 50 for the Suns. There's good pressure through the midfield uh, by the Saints. They're just not allowing the nice pass to the leading forwards. Stephen, Geary, Armitage combining. Back to Geary. So some of their prime movers involved there. St Kilda uses hands to get it to Dempster. Now a long ball. St Kilda inside their forward 50 for the first time. Malcheski the spoil for the Suns. Riscatelli reads it. Flips it quickly over towards Malcheski. Swallow comes in to help out. Down low he goes. He's dragged to the ground. Over the top of him was Saad. Wants a free kick, doesn't get it. We'll have a ball up. Have a look at that out on the full. That's an unlucky decision. Let's have a look thought. at the back heel with the left foot. Does it come off of that? No. No. It's unlucky. Quick kick forward and playing in front and receiving it on the chest is Saad. This is just a perfect start. The first time it's gone up the other end and uh, right the an opportunity the for the Saints to get on the scoreboard. So as we know, with uh, Ahmed Saad, he does take that very long, deliberate run up. That's 15 gone! But he is a very, very accurate set shot for goal. Stay with me. On the reverse angle, he had a look at what was one ahead of him.
for the first goal of the night. Ahmed Saad. He's still walking. He's still walking. He can take as long as he likes if he keeps walking. And he pushes it right after all of that. Yeah, 30 seconds. If he's moving the 30 second clock, he can take another 10. I've missed that run up. Been a while out of the game, <laughs> but I've missed it. Can you get an ad break in there? There's a couple of interesting matchups forward for the Saints with Rewalt. May's going to Rewalt, and Thompson's actually picking up Bruce. So Bruce's performance last week has drawn him a pretty good defender. Kick out wide. Good jump at it by Dempster. He's been good early. Tries to paddle it through his legs. Smith, quick give. Tape, Ablett. Broughton, Messi, Harbrow. That's not Messi. That releases Collar Jasmine now. Strong running from Prestia. Hard running, but then lets himself down, and that's what Rodney Ed was talking about. Yeah. Great pressure from the Saints, though, coming through, led by their skipper, who's just put in a 100-metre dash to put some pressure on. And whilst he didn't get the tackle in, it all accumulates, and Prestia's kick doesn't hit the target. And he didn't get the tackle stat earlier in the quarter when he chased down Gary Ablett as well and ended up smothering the ball. So, great work. Smith wrestling. Riscatelli comes through. Down low. Over the top of it, Shenton. Gets another goal at it. Second time, he drills it and just hammers it out of the defensive zone, trying to get some relief. First back for the Suns, Harbrow. Very hard man to tackle. Zip, zap, Jared Harbrow. Away he goes. Oh, oh chase. chase, though. He got past. And then Nunes came back and got him. What a great chase. He was done cold, but didn't give up. Terrific signs here for... Oh, the St Kilda footy club, their work rate is superb. Well, there's more to like a bit about St Kilda than the Suns in this first uh, five or six minutes. Well worked there. Savage involved, so too Dunstan. Revolt on the chest. Oh, somehow falls out for Saad. This time it's not a long run-up. This time it's round the corner. And this time it's a different result. First goal, St Kilda. Well, the impressive build-up, wasn't it, from oh, the yeah. tackle that dragged Harbrow to the ground. That transition was all Here close. So he's done cold there and closes the gap. Knows he hasn't got the leg speed, but hangs in there, then lunges just to lay a tackle. Great use from uh, Nick Rewald on the left slipper here. Misses the target. Well, actually, misses the intended target, but hits hard and uh, just snaps one around the body. I think the standard's been set by Nick Rewald. His work rate up the field has been great. Fantastic finish that time by Ahmed Saad. Knee sees on Adam Saad. You don't see that very often, just a... A couple of spelling, a couple of change of the letters. That's right. And uh, we spoke with Rodney Eade about the kicking efficiency. That's well down, 38% by foot at the moment, the Suns. Dunstan driving them forward again. And oh. <laughs> that's not a bad mark. That's Adam Sard over Ahmed Sard. Just missing targets still. Yep. Shenton back for the Saints. Off over to Robertson. Kept it low, probably too low there. But coming through, Stephen. Saad, might get a free kick for holding, and it's going to be, is it Saad or is it all the way back for Swallow? It will be Saad. Well, pretty much even between the arcs at the present time, the Saints have just been a little bit more efficient inside their forward 50 and has set up some better opportunities. Saad by hand, risky, the volleyball work from advantage taken. It was Malcheski who tapped oh. it over to Colin Jasny. Strange decision there. Well done by Hallahan. Saad kept going. Drills it in low. Sexton can't take it. Martin can. Gets up quickly on the left boot. And again, the Gold Coast Suns miss a target. And operating at 33%. Uh, St Kilda going at 67% by foot. Gaz just having a spell. Looking to get back on the ground, but uh, just on ice at the moment. From the throw-in, Longer over the top, but only as far as Prestia, who wobbles it forward for a behind. Four-point margin. Well, he had the sweeping roll and was uh, unattended. Could have done better with that. Hold there now. Fisher. Good vision. Saw that uh, Nunes just had five metres on his opponent, Harbrow. And he spots up Revolt, who's prepared to work up the ground. Be the next man in the link. And this kick out wide. Hoping for Curran. Just missed his target a little bit. We'll have another boundary throw in. So, Saints off to a bright start. Well, they're playing, essentially, Nick Rewald as a very tall midfielder. It's yep. where he started his career as a wingman. He used to be the defensive wingman floating across the half-back line. And uh, it's given Josh Bruce 
a lot of opportunity up forward. Well, Saints are doing a lot right at the moment, boys. The younger tested marks 11 to 2 in favour of the Saints. They're getting out in space, yep. and more importantly, they're using it, unlike the Suns. Used it okay there in close. Kick going forward. Billings. That's a second go at it. Tapped it back to Armitage with strength. Hemel over top to Bruce. He's caught. Kept it going in the same direction. Going again. And a good result. Big Tom Lynch. Looking forward to returning after suspension. Just outside the forward 50 for the Saints. Day has the height. Down to Prestia. Missed Malcheski, poked forward by Curran. And again, we, we saw this last week with the Western Bulldogs, the ability to have repeat stoppages. David, and there's the Gary Ablett. He is the, the only man in the forward half for the Gold Coast Suns. Dylan Robertson would be nervous, you would believe. Very nervous. Well done by Armitage to give it to Shenton. His kick floats in. But again, they're doing all the attacking. They're winning the stoppages at the moment, St Kilda. They are, and just uh, the Suns are just trying to uh, find it a little difficult to get out. There's once again Gary Abbott. He's uh, got a lot of space. Of uh, been standing on his uh, father in the forward half all yeah. by himself. <laughs> it's a nerve-wracking experience. Kick forward by Swallow. No one home for the Gold Coast. Delaney just a little fumble back to Robertson. Nice and relief to get the ball, and then just lays it off nicely. Shenton can keep going here from just outside 50. Revolt in pretty good position. Brawl well, came in. Saad. He's looking dangerous. Bruce should have a shot. And finally does, just to behind. Now, Prestia set up an opportunity for the Saints to kick a goal because he overcommitted in the Did. spoil. If you're not going to impact the spoil at all, you've got to either take the man or take the ball. That's the point, because he actually was never going to get there. That's right. So it was a bad call. Opened up. Should have been a goal for the Saints. Now Chesky do himself. He wants Day. Fisher stood his ground. Martin. This kid is excited. Well, he didn't see. Oh. He just didn't see Robert. But he he did not down. see. It. He put his head down to bounce, and he lost all vision of what was ahead of him. There's a sight screen at that end because he just didn't see the jumper. Chance for St Kilda because of it. Billings little gift to Loney who just lost it. We'll have a throw in. He also missed the handball target inside as well. There was a release player on these check Never Have a look at him. Put his head down. He's thinking about the handball, oh. but he misses the player in front of him. Lucky he's playing this modern era, not 20 years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yeah, we'd still be picking him up. That's right. Armitage. Back to Fisher. High kick up. Tough one to mark. They come in in numbers. The spoil is Rory Thompson. So good at that. And the other point with uh, Martin running and getting tackled, Harley Bennell was in the forward 50 all by himself. He'd broken from the centre circle and was almost a lay down was there for a goal but again another forward 50 stoppage these are wins for St Kilda wow. Zach Smith Armitage first to it though for the Saints he got some help from memory just got it out wide hoping someone can run onto it first to it Dunstan back to Robertson Holding. Swallow. Goal coach. after Robert had got rid of it it's going to be Swallow's hold Swallow's free kick against Dunstan. Good young player. Just there is there. Didn't need to do that. His kick looking for either Lynch or Smith. It comes off of Smith to Lynch, who floats it forward to Prestia. They're running hard now. He's got no one to kick to, so he puts Smith. it out in front. He's going to back Took Miller to run onto it. He's still going, but he's got a chaser in Savage who's got speed. That's good defensive play by Savage. Strange decision by Prestia. All he had to do was lay off to the right and wait for the, yeah, wait, wait for the recovery. Well, that's right. Ablett was closing quickly on his right-hand side. Had to had the composure to wait, put him into space. So Here's the matchup. Maverick Weller, the tackling machine, has gone to Prestia. He's had uh, great history against the Saints, averaging about 27 possessions. Ablett, bit of room to move. Oh, Core. Rewild again. Miller. Revolt just a bit slow to get up after that tackle, just holding his left shoulder a little bit. Let's hope he's okay because he's leading from the front at the moment. The skipper, you see there. Let's just watch when he tackles. Just, yeah, he just rolls underneath. Yeah. Josh, Josh, Josh. Boundary throw in. Risk a telly. Great tap. Yeah, Smith just put it on his chest. 
High ball up for Day with Fisher. No crummer there yet for the Sun. Sexton decides to push it over the line. Boundary thrown once again. They can set up. Again, yeah. Nick Rewald in the hands of the medical staff from the Saints. Just checking that shoulder that he landed fairly heavily on. But again, his work rate has been incredible. Actually hasn't been credited for a tackle yet, but we've seen three very good efforts. Mm. Shenton through some traffic, but a lot of Gold Coast numbers here. Pressed here. Collar Jasny on his left. He's a strong kick. It's another behind. It's Four behinds. Of kick, Vinci. While you go around the corner when you can just do a straight drop punt, is uh, one of the more baffling decisions uh, you see a lot of players in this era. Especially when you're facing front on the goal when you get the football. And turn away. And turn turn to the left yeah. rather than going straight. Stay, Stay, Smith's been good in these um, last three or four boundary throw-ins. Been controlling it. There it is again. Good hands. Yep. Very quick from Harbrow. Drums at the back. Over the top. Lynch couldn't burrow through there. Well done, I think it was from Delaney not to give away that free kick there. Lynch turned into the, the tackle. Could have been a head knock. Seven inside fifties apiece. Four behinds. One goal, two. Smith again. Billy Long has got a challenge here because Smith is taking him to the cleaners, getting these uh, effective taps. Ablett, Bennell, through some traffic. He goes around the corner. That's going all the way. That's a goal. That's tough, dude. Harley Bennell can kick those day in, day out. Well, that's the appropriate time to kick one round the corner because you're running away from goal. You're not running towards goal. And you just saw this young magician produce a, a fine piece of work. Here's Ablett, whips it across his body. And running away from the goals, that is a magnificent piece of skill. And Miles Shepard on the boundary line as well. That is a great kick, all but 50 metres around the body. And that's the reward for effort they needed. Yes, they do get some reward for effort there, Alistair, and that's a fantastic finish from Bennell. He's a prime mover in this team, so he can't afford to have a few weeks off here and there now. He's, he's one of the prime. He's got to play consistently, be at that work rate all year. Well, if they're not going to be reliant on Gary Ablett week in, week out, yeah. Bennell got, needs to go to another level, and that's around consistency mainly. Lemons up and down with a nice catch. You know, I was disappointed that Gorringe uh, missed out tonight, Matthew. Well, is that Jared? It would have been nice to call uh, Gorringe and Lemon in the same passage. Thank you very much. Working beautifully, Jared. And there's the kick from Harbrow. Riscatelli, they're going to work it out here. Hallahan. Riscatelli should kick this. He does. Great nice kick. transition from the Suns. Well, that's a better Belize. Much better play by the Gold Coast. Just five minutes of genuine top quality football. And you spoke about consistency. It's going to be pressed yet, who has been pretty consistent in recent times, and Swallow, along with the ones that you've already named, that are going to uh, determine the future of this club. Not Gary Ablett. He's delivered at a high rate for a long time. We know what he delivers. That is a good uh, couple of minutes by the Suns. Michael Riscatelli, 10 disposals already. Yep. Halfway through the first quarter, he's been a, a super player today so far and it looks like he's just taken uh, up the challenge he's getting to the end of his career and he's uh, he looks as fit as I've ever seen him and he's had a terrific pre-season yeah, good pre-season that's kick from Martin drop ball Sun's looking dangerous again Ablett Gee. Miller comes in over the top and won it Miller got it back towards Ablett probably the the hot man in that contest, and Robertson gets him and puts him down again. Well, it's a bit of a tragedy for the Saints, boys. They started off so well, and within two minutes of football, they're eight points behind. But the Saints still lead in most most categories. But, you know, we, we hold in high regard, so it's uh, disappointing from the Saints' point of view. Well done by Longer. He was going down to the ground, still won the top. But Presti with disposal number 11, Smith. Smith. Not much room for Lemons to get through. He had to squeeze through, Jared. Nice work. Smith. Swallow, now Martin. Now Smith. Good He's, been good Smith. He's been a really good worker. Yep. Now a chance for St Kilda on the way out. Well, they've got to move it. Remember, he's by himself. He's got to go quick. Hard running from Stephen. We're used to seeing that. Gets it from the skipper, Rick Revolt. And he goes really. back again for the 1-2. And then he goes into the pocket, heading in the memory direction, but over the top. 
interesting decision to go the long pass. He had the uh, yeah. one, the handball, the extra handball. Probably made the wrong call there, the skipper. Yeah, I reckon we can give him a little out, though, because he worked that Plenty hard. He was outs. probably in a semi-conscious uh, state because he worked so hard. He's been very, very impressive. Longer won that knock, and he gives his teammates a chance. Armitage got down, got it, gave it back to Longer. Kick around the corner, doesn't go far. Swallow has Harbrow. Oh, just he just dropped, dropped it. it. He forgot to go with it. Malcheski went past it off the ground. Dunstan, it's a goal. Well, that is one of the great soccer goals that uh, we've seen in recent years. Absolute cracker. Here it all comes is, down yeah. A little bit of a fumble. Harbrow just drops the ball here. He wasn't tackled at the time, but it spills out. Good work from Saad to get the ball moving. <laughs> or get his opponent off the ball. That is a really nice flush. He has turned that into an inside-out torpedo. Let's have a look. <laughs> Officially known as a Woomer banger. Nice goal, Luke Dunstan. Man, you play Man City in the weekend. They may play that tape before the game. <laughs> Wonderful finish with the Woomer banger. So it comes back to the centre and the opportunity for the two rucks to have an impact. Smith, just a little bit too much on it for Prestia. Standing in the way, Harbrow. They go backwards towards Swallow. He's under some pressure. Harbrow's owes him one. And he flips it sideways to Prestia. Now Long, Benner wants it towards the goal square. Doesn't get there. Crumman needed. Hallahan's first there for the Suns. He's got a strong body. Gives it to Bennell. Doesn't decide to well shoot this time. He spots the master and he kicks it to Adler. Now that is really good team play. He's got the capacity to have us swipe at the goal from that position. And yet he uh, went with a much higher percentage choice and that was to give it to Gary Adler. Great play. Well, we've seen Bennell kick one from this spot around the corner. We've seen Riscatelli kick one on the end of a good passenger play from the same spot. This for the third in a row for the Gold Coast Suns, all from about the same position on the ground. Just inside 50. We'll get the distance. Doesn't miss too many. And that's a beautiful finish by Ablett. And, and well received by the crowd here. Lynch, you have all uh, got themselves a banner and they're pretty enthusiastic in the waving of them. Well, they're pretty happy to see uh, Gaz out there again. Good defensive spoil out wide, but a good, great crumbing there to keep the ball in play and, as you said, Benel's composure to look at goals instantly but then also look wide and saw Gaz in space and I cannot recall the last 45 metre drop punt that he's missed. Got a couple last week. Gary, and he's got one tonight. Pristia involved again. 12 disposals for him. Just changing around the matchup on uh, Gary Abbott. Here he goes back there now. Smith won it again. Riscatelli to swallow. It's going to be an issue as we get as the game goes on, too, because Smith can have a break. Not sure Longer gets much of a break. Here's Shenton. No, Longer battled last week. And so needs a big game today. Now. Malcheski went to ground when he probably didn't need to, so it's a chance here for St Kilda. Sinclair involved with the 1-2. Shenton back to Sinclair. They're giving up some ground, but they maintain possession. Fisher. Switch. Got choice of two. First in line, Delaney. Dempster peels off to the right, or he goes in the middle and missed the target. But Dunstan can take it. He's had a spell. He's back out there. Well, if you're going to have the courage to go in board, you've got to have the skills to back it up. Gary. And uh, that time, the Saints coach would have been pretty nervous. Got away with it, though. Yep. Once again, Rewald on the charge. He's really working Steve May over. Well, that was light contact. Yeah, that's 50. And was, that's, it, was it touched? I think it might have been touched, but it was hard for the umpire to see. They're going to give another 50. It'll be 250. That's, that's a goal, Revolt. Well, that's against Stephen May, and that was an obvious one where he went over the mark. We'll see here. Now, he makes contact after the mark, which you're not allowed to do. Yeah. He probably yeah, thought it was down, touched, down, and that's 50. And yeah. the second one is from Tom Lynch. He gets involved here where he just doesn't need to. That's done. Yeah. So, a gimme goal here for the Saints, and it'll go to Nick Revolt. So, the captain at both ends. Kicking goals. I don't think uh, it took a lot to knock uh, Nunes over, but uh, it's Still, unnecessary. What's he getting involved for? Goal revolt. Goal Saints. 
Well, the Gold Coast Suns fans are booing. They're not happy at all. But it probably should be directed at uh, probably Tom Lynch, to be fair. I think Stephen May did he thinks think it was on. a play on and touched. But it was a 50-metre penalty because it wasn't called play on. Yep. But Lynch getting involved with Nunes here just didn't need to do it. The only thing that can happen is this, a 100-metre penalty. And Tom Lynch coming off a suspension. Yeah. Been back for <laughs> less than a whammy. quarter. Lucky to be still out there. Goal to Revolt. Just doesn't need, need to happen. That is a gift goal to St Kilda. Something the, the Suns shouldn't be doing at this stage of the game, or at any stage, really. Six disposals for, for Nick. And here goes Weller. Better one from Longer, and incredibly well taken oh, by the Suns. And great vision from Jack Hughes to just see the man off to his left. Ends up on the ground again, Jack yep. Nunes in about the same spot. But that vision, the, the take and the handball from uh, Weller was great vision, great execution. Then Nunes had probably every right to just blaze away to the top of the goal square, but identified that he had Curran in space. So Tom Curran to put the Saints back in front. Two goals in 30 seconds. Curran, 45 metres out. It's pretty straight. It's pretty true. And they're back in front. This is a good fight back by the Saints. They had lost the grip on this quarter only a couple of uh, minutes ago. Nice work from Longer. And Jack Nunes has been really impressive in this quarter. He dragged Harbrow down, which created a goal uh, yeah, early in true. the piece. Yeah. And that is brilliant vision and having good skills to back it up. And his teammate, Tom Curran, didn't let him down as well. Good game of footy. Just the two disposals. Only kicked eight goals in his short career of 23 games, so a timely one for him. Yeah. And Alan Richardson very pleased with the fight back. Played plenty of good football in the VFL as Tom Curran. That time Smith winning, giving Hallahan a chance to run onto it. He's bundled out of it by Loney. Of course. See a trip from, here. from the umpire that was in the forward 50 for the Saints, so not the umpire that was closest. So. He was 70 metres away yep. when he saw it. Loney. What the look of Loney. Bruce is going to get a jump at it. Oh, and crummer. down in front, the crummer is Nick Revolt for his second of the quarter. Not to be. All the way across the front, but they can still set up for the boundary throw in. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're six foot four. If you're out of position, you can take up a forward crumbing spot. Nick Revolt did that really well, allowed his younger forwards to jump for the contest. Jack Loney, he's got that weapon. With the left foot, he looks like a good decision maker. Plenty of skill. Push forward by Longer, hoping that Weller could run onto it. It's pinched by Prest here. Collar Jasny stands and delivers. High ball, very tough one to mark. Fisher and Day in the contest. Hallahan rolls on over. Bundled over the line. Hallahan in his second game for the Gold Coast Suns after Billy. six with the Hawks. Four-point margin to the Saints with... Just under, or well, just over three and a half minutes remaining. Zach Smith again. Riscatelli getting a lot of the taps from Smith. Handball just as far as Luke Dunstan. Now they fought back well, kicking the last two goals of the Saints. They can't make any mistakes in this last three minutes. This is a critical time for St Kilda, for both teams really, but the Saints have worked well to get back in the game and, and hold the lead. Well, Mav Weller has come off. He was guarding Dion Prestia. Now no one's guarding Dion Prestia. Now, well, Prestia, uh, he's worked extremely well. He's had 13 disposals. Richo at the start of the game said Weller was going to go to Ablett, but that changed. Looks like Billings is trying to push over onto him. Bennell's free here. He, Bennell was going to flip it over the back, and that's what he did. Nunes, in fact. A sloppy handball from Hallahan puts Lemons under pressure. Loney's got him. Oh, Wants yeah. a kick, free kick for a high tackle, wins yeah, it. Just a little high. And uh, Lemons, another player back into the side. Sard off the outside of the left boot. Oh, oh, missed that. That was just a gift. Yeah, Curran decided to go for the spot, but he could have easily marked it. Miller dives in over yeah. the top. Contact below the knees. It'll be Miller's free kick. Yeah, he's pointed the wrong way. So, Curran dives on the ground. A big moment here. And the Saints with the turnover with a chance. Just outside 50, the kick. Comes in towards Sard. Take him by Colin Jasny. Handball's a hot one. It's a hot footy. Pressed here. He's under pressure. Still the Saints. Still Sard. By hands, he goes back to Armitage. Got a man out to his left. Decides to go long. Membry or Bruce. Crummer is Loney. Loney round the corner. Floats it. 
Does it come back enough? No, wrong side of the post. Didn't come back enough. But Membry was uh, jumping with his uh, teammate, I think it was Delaney. No, it wasn't. It was... Uh, uh, Bruce. Bruce. Yep. Yeah, the two big young forwards jumping together. Bruce Love probably needed to protect Membry's back. Love the handball from Ahmed Saad. It wasn't a two-metre handball inside, putting his teammate under pressure. He found some space and released the ball. Should have been a should have been a uh, sick pointer. Saad gets a one-two from Broughton, and off he goes. He does accelerate pretty quickly when he runs, but oh. this is a hot handball. They just refuse to kick it at the moment. Thompson, tape. Hartbrow still by hand, still going back. Melcheski says, I've had enough of this. You can have it. Kicks it over towards Riscatelli. He's had plenty of the ball. But they still want to handle back oh, in ball. The pump here again. He's still doing it. Well, last week, the Saints were outstanding at keeping the ball inside. This time, their structure has failed. And Bennell gets an opportunity to set up another goal. He's on his wheels at the moment, Bennell. On the left boot, low ball. Day would spoil. Coming through Smith. He's not the man oh, you want boy. to have front square, but he did really well to get it today. Poor kick from him. Oh, oh they're oh. lucky. They dodged the ball at the Saints. But well done. They chased hard. Billy Longer was the one that put the big chase and pressure. Another 50 metre penalty. Well, this... Lemons just gave it back to the man that was closest to it. Yeah, so just see here. It's a three metre kick. Yeah. Should never be allowed. There's just a the little high contact. Wasn't a lot in it. Just Lemons not sure was about to ping one away. Not sure what Day was thinking there because A, it was three metres, and B, there was a bloke right behind him. It was just a pressure kick, I suspect. Armitage floats it out wide. St Kilda a chance to get one here. Dunstan kicked one off the ground. It was an absolute beauty before. This one goes into the first two of the stand. Out of bounds on the full. Minute remaining. Saints probably deserve another goal here to be two goals up at quarter time. He had a bit of extra time there, Dunstan. He'd worked hard. It was amazing to see how much space he actually had in the forward 50. Now, Chesky's kick out is a turnover straight away to Nunes. As Jared said, he's been important. He's been in the right place at the right time a few times, but not so clean there. It's an interesting... Oh, he played high contact here. Interesting observation. Nick Melcheski, great player for the Swans, Premiership hero, changed clubs. I think he's struggling to settle in at the present time. He's not hitting targets. Decision, he's a little bit fumbly. His decisions are, are, are not what we're used to seeing, is it? Or and to they? be honest, a lot of it last week was a bit tentative. He just didn't, wasn't confident in the way he was going about his play that we normally expect from an All-Australian halfback flanker. Ablett told to go. 25 seconds remaining in the quarter. For the Suns to fashion something. He gets around and kicks it inside the Ford 50. Contest. Crummer was Bennell. First two at those Shinton. And he wants the boundary line. Finds it. Oh, you can't pay that. I wouldn't have thought. He was working pretty hard. Obviously, his intention was to get it over the line, but I think he had to dive and stop it. It was a bit tight, I would have thought. Yep. Interesting call to throw the mouth guard away. Onto the grass, wasn't it? Onto the grass. Can't go forward and find oh. full play on. So where's this going? Top of the square? Yeah. No, he had a shot. With a drop punt. Oh. He wasn't far off. <laughs> Revolt. Doing a great job at the moment. Not what we're used to seeing from him, but he's working all over the ground to help his team out. And some of that help has managed to get his team in front at quarter time. Both sides have been inside Ford 50 16 times. But the Gold Coast have wasted some footy. And Secura have been a lot cleaner. Quarter time here at Metricon Stadium. The visitors have a slight lead of four points. Welcome back to Metricon Stadium. It's just a uh, four-point game. Both coaches going through what they feel is important after a quarter where probably the Gold Coast would feel as though they've wasted a lot of the footy, they've had more possession, but the uh, Saints have been very, very good at their pressure inside their Ford 50, and they've had uh, Revolt working up the ground, so they've actually been pretty pleased, I think, to lead by that four points. There you have it, 27 plays 23, all single goal kickers. Look at the possessions for the midfielders for the Gold Coast. 17 Riscatelli, 14 Preston, 9 Bennell. So they're doing the work, they're covering for Ablett, and Armitage, Shenton and Dunstan getting plenty of the ball. Time and forward half, St Kilda, Although contested possessions, Gold Coast, Alistair. Yeah, no, it's a, a really important stat, the contested possessions, to be plus 14. It's a great sign. Their handball receives is another really good 
big win for the Gold Coast Suns. Just haven't been able to hit the targets enough going inside forward 50. But as you said, there's some great midfield stats there. It's not all reliant today on Gary Abbott. No, it's not. Rich Cattell is 17. That's a world record for this He's on year. world record pace. Yeah, it's 17 is the uh, most for anybody this season. And he's uh, made uh, 235 metres game. But Gary Abbott is always the story. And he was pretty good in that first quarter. Seven possessions. But uh, he impacted on the scoreboard. And more importantly, he physically looks OK. We saw he was carrying his left shoulder. And probably he's slightly there. But it hasn't impacted his play. And can go forward and, and be a really dangerous target. So he gets slammed into the ground by Gary on that occasion. But we know if he drifts forward, he can take marks and kicks beautiful goals. So I uh, think uh, he looks much better this week compared to round one. Now uh, let's get down to Barry Graham a little. Barry, how have you seen the ruck duel? It's been fascinating to watch Zach Smith uh, do his work against Longer. Yeah, it has been fascinating. We spoke about the ebbs and flows of the game, and it seems to be whatever ruckman's on top in the middle, and whoever gets a hand on the footy the most is, is getting the ascendancy in this, putting the score on the board. Have a look at some of these clearances and hitouts from the from the Secure Footy Club. It's a really good duel. This Zach Smith. We we spoke about players stepping up for the Gold Coast Suns. He's certainly done that. He has just equaled the hitouts to advantage. Uh, record of all time. Nine hit outs to advantage that quarter. So it was, it was a fantastic effort from him. He's really stood up. But this this is the one for me. Longer versus uh, Zach, Zach Smith. This is a real duel. So a couple of uh, pr impressive individual performances on world record pace. As we go to the second quarter and Savage gets the first kick forward and standing in front and getting the benefit of that is Billings. He wheels around, puts it out into the pocket. Bruce leads in the race for the ball. Kept it in play. It's a clever kick. It'll force May to get down low and try to handball to Thompson, and that's how you take it over the line. Yeah, it just attack a bit more. Wasn't an impressive attack on the ball from Savage at the opening bounce. It's just great to see a half back in front coming through, charging through, and not just blazing away, but hitting a target. There is a wonderful knock from Longer. He got rid of Smith on that occasion. A little bit past Armitage. That is a big stat. Nine. Nine to advantage. to advantage. He had 14 Thank for the quarter. Zach. And that's a uh, very effective ruck work. And both boys didn't have their best games in round one, looking to bounce back. Longer wins that one again. I mean, Lennon. that's a good number for a game for a ruck. Oh, yeah. It's a huge number. Saad with a spoil. Shenton was clever there. He got free, gave it over to Dunstan, who gave it to Loney, and Loney kicks up very high towards the line. Crummer needed for uh, Secilda, but May rushes it through for a behind. Good coverage here. Just uh, going to force a long kick. or well, the bailout kick short. That's a good win from Secilda. Good pressure. One on one. Longer. Smith. Smith gets down and just paddles it out but doesn't quite reach Harbrow. Spinning was Mel uh, Weller. Now Shenton again from outside 50. Revolving good position. Gets rid of his opponent. Looks like take. a big shove out to me but he yeah. got away with it. A great effort. See the ball comes in. Nick Rewalt left the screen. Big shove let's say on the side but I'm not sure you can actually push him over anyway. You see the tape giving away a fair size advantage there. Revolt came in. Knocked it down in front, but there was no one there for St Kilda. Prestia gave it to Swallow. Membry did enough to bring it to ground. Shenton had a good first quarter, and he's picked up where he left off from. Back to Robertson. In turn, Fisher. On top over Lynch at the moment. Weller, quick give. Stephen on the burst. 55 out, kept it low. Bruce the target, got it. Good take. Great reach from Bruce. Saw his big hang pre-game from round one, but that was uh, that was a confident double foot jump straight up in clean hands. The yeah, coach is going to like him taking that more so than a big grab. Oh, absolutely, yeah, great defence from the Saints. It was locked into their forward half. Continue. Ball came out. Yet they had the line. Suns weren't able to press through that line, and uh, they get a repeat entry. Mem Membry went back with the fly. The ball hurt himself. It's coming from the ground now, but this is the result. Yeah, that was the courage shown by Membry. The result is the goal to Bruce, and the Saints pinch a little lead here, out to 11. So well, actually, everybody at the start of the season, I think, had the Saints winless on the bottom of the ladder. Or, uh, if you're a little bit more generous, here's the injury to memory. Looks like he's uh, got one in the back, which uh, 
could be anything at this stage, but this is a really impressive performance by the Saints. They pressed the GWS last week at a good win today. And they are really taking it up to the Gold Coast, who was reportedly, uh, or reputedly, going to push for finals footy this year. So the goal to Bruce and St Kilda get their fifth all individual goal kickers so far. That's a good sign for Coach Richardson. And it's another goal because of their defensive actions. They're doing this really well. Oh, here's Savage on the burst again. He's rewarded for his run. Oh, oh bad. Two in a row, Josh Bruce. That's He's a arrived. strong grab. Looked like he had a lot of pressure, physical pressure coming from both sides. And just sticky hands to grab that one. Held the ball long enough. Great work from Saint, uh, Shane Savage coming off halfback. Probably played his best game last week uh, since crossing over. But this is a really good grab under pressure from a really good defender in Rory Thompson. It started with Longer again too. He's another clever tap. Got it down to Dunstan. Savage on the burst. Bruce for two in a minute. Makes no mistake. He's enjoying himself. Saints by 17. Well, I think we're finding plenty out about the Saints right now. And Alan Richardson clearly is having an impact on this group. But what we are going what to find out... Yeah, beautiful. We're going to find out plenty about the Gold Coast Suns and what uh, Rodney Eade has got to work with. OK to have talent, but right now they are pressured and they're under the pump. Well, they've got an enormous amount of talent, the Suns. We're not seeing that at the moment because they've been out-pressured and out-tackled and outworked by this mob, basically. As you said, I think everyone was expecting them to be 18th. They're showing they don't deserve to be down there at the moment. Fantastic start to the second quarter by St Kilda, by that man there, Josh Bruce. Two goals, they lead by 17, and it's starting with Longer here. They almost tried to flip it over the back to Sinclair, but Riscatelli, 17 disposals in the first quarter, two off the record of 19. Push out. Push out. Tom Lynch just a little frustrated at the moment. Can't find the space. He's been well held by the 200 gamer in, in Fisher. And Lynch just first game under his belt after a week's suspension. Has played a couple of practice matches in the twos whilst uh, being on ice. But just can't pick up the flight of the ball just yet. Beautiful pass. A wonderful pass onto the chest of Loney. He's looking for his team out up forward in current but couldn't find him. Back goes Tate. Now Chesky back on the ground. That time he measures his pass and finds his target in Lemons. And Matty Memory just went down the race. Uh, got to assess. He's back up running the boundary line now, so I expect him to enter the game pretty soon. Thanks, Barry. He's in the interchange area. Switch a play from the Suns. I haven't seen a lot of that so far from then. No, well, certainly not quick ball movement. They haven't been able to transition from deep defence. Oh. Oh, he's paid the mark. Well, you pay the mark and blow the whistle. You can, can you change your mind? Well, umpires tell you, play the whistle. Yeah, play the whistle. I think the whistle was blown. Yeah. Confusion there. Lynch. Fisher right with him again. Miller came through. Clever ball. Hardbrow around the corner. Lynch kept going. And could have handballed over the top today, but kicks the goal and goes down at the same time. An answering one for the Suns. Well, I reckon he got it right in the umpire because yeah. it was a neutral ball when it hit. He was only going to uh, come in and throw the ball up. In fact, St Kilda ended up uh, relatively with an advantage. So I've got a problem with that in the umpire. And Lich, I think, would have been pleased to see that one go through because there was a handball option. But if you kick it, well, fair enough. back in the team he's given away a 50 and he's found it hard to get free of uh, Fisher but he gets a goal Tom Lynch certainly helps the confidence just to get one on the scoreboard for a forward I think he's the most important player they've got and away from the great man Gaza oh, if they're remotely going to challenge for finals they need another big year from Tom Lynch yep Allahan gets a pretty tough bounce Dunstan tapped it down to Savage again just lacked a bit of composure there Swallow he wasn't under pressure and he just whacked it around the corner May ran himself into trouble but managed to find Broughton and Smith let it go there. So you can take that. And Martin does so. He looks dangerous, Martin. He's one I don't think they've got a genuine matchup for. He's been involved in the last goal and he looks to be that hit up player that generally is a position or a role played by someone much bigger. Two on one situation. Fisher wins it. Numbers went out for the Saints. Down to Sinclair. Oh, rewind one to Long. 
And hey. just a little bit low, didn't get enough on it. Revolt at the back. Tape. Got Good him. Tackle. That's Over a goal saving tackle by Tape. Quick hands out of being able to be released. That was a genuine shot at goal. Rodney, you'd be thrilled with this. Yeah, good tackle. Great tackle. Can't run through the mark, straight back. Now back for tape to restart. Move on, play on. Martin caught over the back. Ablett trying to put a boot in there. Weller, Sinclair. The bounce. Hands it back to Fisher. Kicks it up high. Revolt and tape again, but somehow falls from memory at the back. Seen that a couple of times to St Kilda. But not the man in, in, in the front, falling over the back on the chest. That's right, and the three bigs are causing a few concerns for the defence of the Suns. They've had to play tape on Rewald, and that's probably a combination of someone that can actually run with him, and the fact you've got memory up there as well, and Bruce. So Thompson and May have got their hands full, and tape certainly has with Rewald. A couple of goals last week. First goal of the year, in fact, for St Kilda in the opening quarter. You get that margin back to 17. 35 metres out, slight angle. It's always a little bit shallow, wrong side of the post from him. What we're not seeing from the Gold Coast, and it's something that I think was one of their stronger traits last year, is good transition. Mm. They're really struggling to take the ball from deep in the fence, connect it all up and get it inside their forward 50. You're right, and I think that was a strength last year. And you think yeah, they added more ball carriers to that half-back line. Well, here we go again. I mean, that is just a non-thinking kick. Well, I think they've put Malcheski back there as well, one of the better uh, ball distributors in the competition. Dempster's kick in. There was numbers there for uh, the Suns. Oh, and and there's Malcheski. You just mentioned him. On cue, he kicks it straight oh, they got numbers to Fisher. Everywhere forward. Two balls out of their defensive 50, straight to St Kilda. It'll be a free kick. Borderline, I think they'll let him get away with that. Yes. But we are coming back to the major problem, and that is Nelcheski has butchered the ball just after, I think it was uh, Sexton, also uh, knocked it straight back to them. In fact, it was Lemons. Straight to him. So it's a big issue, whether it's decision-making, whether it's pressure, it doesn't matter. The effect is the Saints are winning this battle, and they're winning it because they're getting these repeat entries. Right behind Jack Nunes from 50. And he just sets it to the top of the square for someone to run at it. Maybe Bruce. Ball over the back. Through the legs it goes. Armitage so strong in this situation. Fishes it out. Gets it over to Weller. Weller goes back to Sinclair. A fumble. Could be costly. Still going. Got a call. And the call's from Shenton, but the smother came from Prestia. We've seen that more often this year, that pulled shot from 50-55. Yeah. I haven't seen it work once. I think once the last week it might have worked, but yeah. uh, rarely do we see it. Saw Port Adelaide execute it uh, beautifully okay. once last week, but uh, I think the numbers are running at 1.15. They may have to tell the forwards <laughs> they're going to do it. Marmitich is dumped as he kicked it. There's a fumble from Martin. Oh, holding. Back to Martin. Okay, let's see if they can uh, execute a number of possessions and string some metres going together. Well, they might run themselves into a bit of trouble here. Adam Saad. It's just oh, 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 so here we go. Again. This is amazing. And Secura should make them pay here. And they do. Incredible. On the end of it was Saad. Goal, Saints. Absolutely. Great work by Saints. Just great pressure, Rodney Ede knows that this game is fast slipping away because uh, they are going down in the mind at the present time the gold coast they've lost a lot of confidence good players are making horrible mistakes that's right and as we spoke about when bruce got a goal earlier in this quarter it's the result of their defensive structures and their pressure and that investment in the first term is resulting in these yep. horrible errors off half back which we thought was going to be a strength of the suns this year That was Dick set Spike. Yes, it was. Bennell dug himself into a hole. Set was from Loney. Spike from the skipper. And the goal to Sale. So is it a change of personnel scenario, Lynchy? Because confidence is well down in that defensive area. Do they put a pressure down there? Do they put a swallow down to get a, a genuine architect off halfback? I think they might have to put a, a swallow down there to, to add some steadiness, steadiness across halfback. Lynch up and down. Miller with pace kept it going. And the boot from Dempster sees it over the line. 
and they're leading by 18 points at the moment. You get the feeling secured, the feel as though they've got two or three more in them. Yeah. Yeah, and they've narrowed the gap. I mean, there was a big discrepancy as far as possessions were concerned at quarter time. That's been narrowed, just minus uh, nine now, the Saints, but well up in this turn. Sinclair getting some footy. Touched off the boot. Going again. And as a St Kilda supporter, you'd be wrapped with what Thrilled you're seeing. You're seeing effort, and that's what you want. You want effort, and you want hope, and there's enough young class coming through to give you that hope. And you know you can get through in the short term with the effort that we see here. Knock was won by Day. Kick up and under from Harbrow. Strong attack on the footy from Martin. Rose by Sexton. Lynch. Two on one wins out. Lynch wants the free kick, but Dunstan saves the day for St Kilda. He just hasn't got quite got the handle yet, Tom Lynch. And the other move that's been made by Alan Richardson is that Weller has gone on to Richatelli. And Richatelli, who had a world record 17 possessions in the first term, has had just two in this term. Yeah. And that was a, a mark that Tom Lynch would have eaten for breakfast last year. He was well clear, just didn't quite take it in. Quick hands, Harbrow. Malcheski hasn't got a lot of room to move. Hallahan, good man for that situation. Harbrow, Day, turns quickly. Lynch to go again. Good oh, spoil from spoil. Shenton with courage. Pretty unlucky not to get a free kick at yep. the end. They're out here. Geary, by hand over the top. Savage has a very long leg. Well, she doesn't want advantage because you've got nothing to kick to. And he has to kick it up high and towards the boundary. Thompson should get there first for the Gold Coast. Can pat it back and he does. Well Broughton by hand. It's going to come back in pretty quickly. May, big Stephen May down the line. Lynch on a lead. Dropped it. He's having a shocker, Lynch. A little reckless, I would have thought. Almost, Almost a free, free kick, kick against Sexton. Geary, Collar Jasney, Prestia just his second disposal of the quarter. Brought in a fumble. But just the pressure from St Kilda causing the Suns to look up and fumble. The Suns need to take the pace out of the game somehow. They need to hit a target and slow down. Free kick against Lemons. The game's running away at the moment. They need to slow this game. Advantage. Well, if they call advantage here, he's got 50. There's 50 metre penalty. They're starting to implode here, the Suns. This is uh, a massive issue. Lack of discipline, and lack of intensity in the, the Saints. The young Saints are showing them up at the moment. Well, it is the young Saints, and you can speak about Jack Stevens. Only of the six disposals, he's their best best midfielder. They're not having to rely on guys like this. It's, it's the younger brigade that's really, really shining them through at the moment. Yeah, I mean, great leadership from their experienced players, but absolutely, there is players that have just come into this side, and they're doing a great job. Shenton's been good. Armitage, Dunstan's a class act and working hard. You can go through the whole list. So one of the four Jacks is Jack Billings from inside 50. Just floats it across the front, but it's too easy, or is it a push? Far it's too, too easy. easy. That's far too easy. The Bruce. defensive coach for the Suns may have just put a hole in the plaster. To think... You shouldn't take contestant marks on the goal line. Well, he's got to think this through. Once you make your decision, make a strong decision and back yourself in. Left foot check side for his third goal of the quarter. Backs himself. Fantastic oh, finish. He's been at me off the ball. Well, this is just a great passage of play by the Saints. And it's a really good quarter. They'd well, be look at this mark here. Thrilled. Yeah, there's a nice touch in the back there. I think the... the Gold Coast would want that explained why that wasn't paid, but nevertheless, you've got to take your option, your, your opportunities, and that's exactly what he has done. That's not their issue, the Gold Coast. Their issue is they're being well beaten in every aspect of the game. Well, as we mentioned before the game, he was played his early football down back. Yeah, it's gone GWS. forward here. Two goals last week, three goals already before half time this week. He's loving it. He's absolutely loving it. You sleep better when you play full forward, I can assure you, compared to full back. <laughs> and what he has done is uh, release Nick Rewald to play further up the ground, and yep. he's working Stephen May over. Miller and Shenton, good battle there. Fisher came in to help out. Shenton's look. Oh, well done. Got well. boots of ball, did okay, because Lynch had his arm. Fisher's kick is a good one. In comes Curran. Almost. Saad pinched it. Missed tape. Longer. 
And numbers went out for St Kilda, and they're just more desperate at the moment. They just want the footy. Robertson. It ends up over to Sinclair, who got it from Weller. Handball's just a little bit short. Numbers in the middle for the Suns, but it comes out towards Weller, and they're still running forward if he can get it moving. Chance here for the Saints through Weller's hands. Second effort, though. Curran slides in. Is that legs? That's legs again. Yeah. Advantage taken by Dylan Robertson. Bang! Goal St Kilda. They're out by five goals. We won't need to get a microphone into the uh, Suns' rooms at half time. We'll be able to hear Rodney Eads' address, I would have thought. Again, to reinforce it, outworked. It was an unlucky free kick against Zach Smith here. He goes to ground. But it's a free kick. It's a free kick. It's an obvious free kick under the interpretation of the rules that we know now. And then the ball spills out and a great goal from Robertson. Yep. On, under a little bit of pressure, but had enough time to straighten up. And straight over the umpire's hat. Great goal. Newton's involved again. Robert in the finish. There's Dylan. She's a bit hungry, the Saints. They're they? just hungrier. Yeah, they're they simple are as that. So much harder at the ball across the ground. It's paying dividends. Really on top in the second quarter. And the two men they've shut down are right there. Riscatelli and Prestia. 31 disposals between them in the first quarter. Well, since the Suns' last goal, they've kicked one goal in the last 40 minutes. They've been belted 18 8 inside 50s. Riscatelli not sure where to go. Back to Harbrow. Quick kick. This bloke has been good. He's been sensational fishing. Celebrating his 200th game. Yep. Made his debut back around 7, 2004. Oh, they won on that day. Just for a skilled side, renowned skilled side, under pressure. They're not producing at all. Well, there was two spare Suns players that that ball went over their heads. And the Saints have been able to rebound, find some safety for a few seconds at least. And that's another, oh, great, another great take by Josh Bruce. Be happy with the, the drafting of this man. Strong hands. Here's Revolt playing up the ground as we've seen all night. Whatever their doing's working at the moment. Five goals up. Still time for more before half time. What they're doing is making the Gold Coast defend, and they haven't got the appetite for it. Nah. They are cruising when Saints players are sprinting. It's very similar. The work rate appears to be similar to what we saw last week yeah. against Melbourne. Extremely disappointing. They've been outworked by Melbourne last week and St Kilda this week. Kick in from Fisher. Big tall timber there for the Suns. Smith with the spoil. Membry and tape coming through Armitage. Umpire, you heard him say ducked into it. And fumble from Gazza. On the left boot. Four on one. Day is the one. The four should win out, and they do. Billings, Geary, top of the square, the kick. Revolt jumps, falls into the hands of Bruce, who oh, gets it over kick. to Sinclair, who rolls it through. What a corner they're having. Josh Bruce with the assist. Josh Bruce is going that well. He didn't know he was going to get that one. It <laughs> fell on his arms. And then he's uh, handballed the ball out. Now, here again, they were outnumbered because they worked hard to yeah. set up the defensive structures. And this is a dangerous kick. It's flat, it's long, great contest from Rewalt. And what about the way Sinclair's Sinclair. First goal in AFL footy. Thought his way through this. Knew that a big snap over the head was going to get smothered. But uh, a little dribbler has worked beautifully. Well, that's his first goal in AFL footy. We'll call him, uh, what do we call him, the Jack of Diamonds. That was a little diamond, that goal. There's four jacks out there. He's one of them. And they now lead by 36 points. Rodney Ede has got plenty to think about. Alan Richardson doesn't want half time to ever come. Well, in this term, it's uh, 14 inside 50s. Make that 15, 15 inside yep. 50s to six. Yeah, the, the Suns are looking for a timeout. Gary Abbott's just had two possessions. Richard Talley's been well held. Swallow, well held. Prestia, also well held. Harbrow's one of the few players who is getting his hands on the ball. Just the confidence now from St Kilda. They're just That's toying with it. And with that confidence, they're running in numbers to support their teammates. Yep. So they're outnumbering the Suns at the contest. Armitage surveys what's up forward. Keeps it low. Hoping for longer. He's back on it pretty quickly. He's got to beat two. Revolt came in to help out. Saad, Ahmed Saad, still going, Here still going, great. Saad. They can kick a goal from here. Gee. Oh, oh no, don't tell me it's Josh Bruce again. They paid the mark. Paid Bruce. the mark on the line. Well, he's one side, just go back to the Just go back and do the same thing. Don't even think of passing it off. 
He's kicked three in this quarter. This for his fourth. A little tighter, actually. He's going to have to step out, you would think. He's just trying to creep out. He's done it. Four for the corner. Josh Bruce. Well, they're just working that hard. They're embarrassing the Suns at the moment. We know Danny Frewe has gone back in a defensive row. If he's in charge of the defensive structures, he'd be wrapped because this is the result. They're getting the ball continually inside forward 50. He's had control of that, so that's fair enough. Yep. Taking it over the line, and again, again, a little left, so left foot check side. Beautiful goal, but uh, a super impressive performance from the goal um, from the Saints. They're the story. Four goals for the quarter for Josh Bruce. Still five minutes remaining. Time for more for him, but this game can be over by half time. Well, they've got uh, the bookends just dominating. Sam Fisher and his 200th is killing them in defence. He's had 11 touches this quarter. And uh, Josh Bruce, in combination with uh, two or three others, is slaughtering them inside four feet. Oh, well done. Playing with them. Dunstan on the outside. Savage kept going. Gave it up. Adam Saad to Ablett. Need a response from the Gold Coast. Switches into the middle. That's 50. Downfield Down today. Doesn't go anywhere, really. Uh, next switch. Is over to Harbrow. Now this is the test for the, both teams now. The Saints have got to get it back and assist. But once again, they're getting outnumbered because they're working harder. And Fisher. that's exactly when they're tired, they still work defensively. There's only one way the Saints, the, the Suns, can get back into this, and that is work hard in defence and transition. They've got to get numbers inside their forward 50 as well. And if all they're doing is uh, sitting back across that half back line looking for a cheap possession. But do they, they're going to get uh, really embarrassed. Do they, to start with, have to stay, take the sting out of this game? Do they, they have to slow things down, get possession and slow the tempo and take the pace out of St Kilda? St Kilda just want this to go flat out at the moment because they're belting the Suns. Well, St Kilda are doing exactly what we thought Gold Coast were going to, going to do. They had a tough week in the track. They were very disappointed about round one. We thought we were going to response. St Kilda are doing exactly what we thought Gold Coast were going to do. And yeah, free kick in the ruck contest here again. And remember that the Saints have had a short break. It's only round two, of course, but a, a short break and a travel. It's a, they wouldn't have been able to do much work during the week. Seven goals to one for this second quarter. Josh Bruce has kicked four of them. Fisher's had 12 out of defence for the quarter. Armitage, Armitage is at 10, 10 through the middle. Working extremely well. And they're much more efficient, aren't they? They're using the ball a lot better. They know when they take on the uh, attacking kick into the corridor. They're operating 75% by foot in this quarter. The Suns are 60. And Swallow just hacks that out of the mid-air, kicks it out of bounds on the fall. So the bad news continues. And when things aren't going your way, those sort of things happen. Armitage again. Gold Coast Suns, fans, stunned, very quiet. The few St Kilda fans that are here exactly. are going to be very vocal come halftime siren. And there's a drop mark by Sate, but it should cost them. That was by tape, I should say. Essentially an uncontested grab. Yep. Revolt with time. Well, this is really oh. ugly. It was an ugly kick too, but it worked because he found his teammate in uh, Loney. Going through the motion, some of these uh, Suns players. Yeah, the chase on Rewald there was uh, second rate. We had time to swing around on his left and, and tee one up. It was a dirty old mung off the boot, but it hit the target. Jack of hearts. Jack Loney. They got a full house. Yeah. Done some good things already. And he's kicked their eighth goal of the quarter. If there's a uh, glass cabinet, I think they better break it. It's an emergency for the, the Suns now. 17 inside 50 to 6. They're doing everything right. And here, again, the chase from Rory Thompson. You're spot on, Jared. It was it was loping through. Yeah. Now, he probably wasn't going to get Nick Rewald, but you've got to put the pressure on so that he rushes the kick. Just well, not good enough, but typical of what we've seen throughout the whole night. Well, if you go back to the first quarter, we commented that the chase from Nick Rewald, Nick Rewald yeah. put the pressure, I think it was on Harbrow for memory, there was one on Harbrow and there was one on Ablett as yeah, well. Which turned the ball over and created opportunities. And and neither of those chases for Rewalt were accredited as a, as a tackle or anything like that. They just, uh, it was class leadership. Oh, they're out again. Going again. Robertson's got a goal in this quarter. He's got a few mates, though. 
player down in the middle. Looks like it may be Armitage. Yeah, he's had 11 disposals for the quarter. He's, he might be just tired. He might, he's had enough. Saad also working beautifully inside the Ford 50 for the Saints, who lead by 48 points as we approach half time. And I think this is what the Suns need to do if they actually get possession. They need to slow things down. Really well played here from the Saints. Fisher, what a quarter from him. 13th disposal. Chance for Saad. Crumbs it. Goes one way. Goes the other. Flips it over to Stephen. Jack Stephen kept it too low. Ricochet ball though. Loney got to beat four. Just flipped it up. Bennell, Harbrow wants no. to use Ablett. They want to run here. No, no one forward. Nowhere yet. to go. And they're going to have to run. Harbrow waits for an option. And goes back by hand. Oh, elevated. Ablett. Yep. Luckily, it was Ablett who was able to get it free pretty quickly to Adam Saad. Now to Tate, but nowhere to go. Now what? Lynch has got free of Fisher for the first time, and he's spotted by Tate. And Fisher's exhausted, that's why. I think realistically, they've got to slow it down now. They've got to take this thing out of the game. They've got to maintain possession, although they may turn it over the way they're going, but they're just giving it back. Too easy. Not just the skill errors, it's the, the thought process. Free kick against Lynch. Armitage, another disposal for him. He's up and about and he kicks it inside the Ford 50, hoping Revolt can run onto it. Thompson runs it over the line. We've got just on a minute remaining. We've got Saints players that have been involved in everything. Here's Lynch. He's just... in the back of Dunstan and Dunstan's up. I can't. The halftime cannot come quick enough for the Suns. Can they can't the, concede another here. Can the Saints get one more? Bennell in traffic. Feeds it off to Riscatelli. Around the corner he goes. Delaney and May's gone forward as an option for uh, Rodney. May's gone forward and that was a good one-on-one -on -one contest. But even there we saw Fisher dropped off Lynch and he was coming over as the second to support if the ball hit the ground and was an option. They're just getting... A lot of numbers to the contest. Sam Day has gone into defence. On Bruce. Four goals for the quarter. Well done by Geary. Over the top of Bruce and Day. Saad got rid of Dunstan. He's good, this young kid. Yep, he's OK. Did well there to get a Malchester. They've got time for one more. They've only kicked one goal for the quarter, but... Turnover again. It's coming pretty quickly, although Miller arrives just in time for the Suns. Spins around, got a call out the back from Prestia. Well, there's two or three Suns there. One of them is Kolodziesny. Pushes it wide in front of Smith. Long a right with him. Lynch, Delaney, all the big men there. No small men there. And Lynch did a pretty good job of kicking the goal, actually. He did. Did well to keep it in. Yep. So inside forward 50s in this quarter are 20 to 7. Eight goals to one. You're going nowhere if you have 28 inside 50s, which is uh, what they're averaging at the present time. Chance for Ablett. Seconds to go. Hits the post. Again, the desperation just put enough pressure on to make sure it wasn't a goal on the siren. Super effort from the Saints. Rodney Ede. I've got a sneaky suspicion he's going to tear the strips off the, off the walls down there. They need something, whether it's a spray or a reset. They've got to change things up because the intensity is just not there. Been outworked. The Saints have been fantastic in the first they half. They have been absolutely brilliant, St Kilda. It's the best quarter I think uh, they have played collectively since they took Fremantle apart last year. They'll go off pretty satisfied. They're going to be tough to beat, obviously, from here. Whether or not yelling at players is going to sure work, work for Rodney yeah. Ede is debatable. I think it's time that the players took actions here. Maybe it's a new style of coach, new strategies, etc. Well, needs something. time to bet in. But at this stage, you can have all the uh, experienced players giving all the instructions you like. But if it's not backed up with work rate, and that was the question, the two words that we spoke about coming into this match, if that doesn't change, the scoreboard won't change. Sam Fisher had a magnificent second quarter with 13 disposals. Here he is talking to Barry right now. Yeah, thanks, Manny. Well, first, first half efforts. What a fantastic uh, first half it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the forward pressure, um, the midfield pressure's been great. So we seem to be getting it down there and locking it in our forward line, which has been really good.
There's a bloke named Josh Bruce who's uh, doing a fair bit up forward for you. Yeah, he's got sticky hands tonight, so hopefully he can keep it going for the second half. What about you and your 200th game? Your coach just gives you, you know, big Tommy Lynch to run around with? Oh, yeah, yeah. They don't get any easier, mate. He's bigger than you and he used to play on you. So, no, nah, it's good. Um, going OK, so. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. He's enjoying himself in game number 200. Sam Fisher, what a player. But he's got plenty of mates. St Kilda fans rejoicing. Look at that scoreline. Half time, they lead by 47 points. Welcome back to Metricon Stadium. The story of the first half, we've seen some desperate individual acts, some wonderful individual performances. Saab getting around the corner for goal, and for a period there in this first quarter, you thought the Gold Coast Suns were getting their mojo together. Wonderful finish here by Harley Bennell, around the corner from 47 metres. They got a bit of a run on because two minutes later, Riscatelli finds himself in a similar position to pop through another goal. And the fans were starting to think, yep, the Suns are back in 2015. But the second quarter belonged to the Saints and it belonged to Josh Bruce. Marking everything inside the 450. Strong hands. One, two, three, four goals for Bruce. And there's another one in the pocket. We've seen him kick around the corner twice. So St Kilda, eight goals in that quarter, have blown the game away. And at half time, they lead by 47 points. 12 goals, five, four to Bruce, two to Saad, and just a four goal six for the Suns. Riscatelli, Harbrow, Prestia getting plenty of the ball, but it's not as valuable as the 21 disposals from Armitage or 16 from Fisher. Gentlemen, there are the stats for the first half, and I've had a quick look through the books. Jared, it's been since round 22, 2012, since the Saints have kicked eight and a quarter. And wasn't it entertaining, uh, Matthew? They would be absolutely thrilled and kill the supporters right across the land, and so they should be, Lynchy. Oh, absolutely. It's been an amazing performance by the Saints. In that second quarter in particular, it was fairly even in the first 20 minutes of the first term. The Saints showed some good signs, but their work rate has been exquisite. So it's an embarrassment for the Suns right now. If it goes on and continues, it's, uh, it could uh, have all sorts of ramifications. Rodney Ede is down there at the yep. present time. He's going to have to drag it back to the basics to get this side uh, back competitive. Give me two things they need to address. Well, the absolute first thing they've got to address is work rate. We haven't seen this lack of intensity. We saw it last week, but we haven't seen it too much in the last couple of years. And then their disposal efficiency off half-back in particular. Well, their kicking uh, was pretty poor last year. Here are the your bottom four sides uh, last year by way of uh, kicking percentages. You see that the Gold Coast were down at 62 0.9%. Well, at half time today, or sorry, in round one they were 62, and at half time today they are uh, below 60%. Well, that's right, they're operating at 57% in the first half, and this is the result of great pressure from St Kilda. And well, on that occasion, that was probably an investment from earlier in the game with yeah. the Saints' pressure, but they haven't been hit, able to hit the targets when they have had time and space. So they're not very difficult kicks, but they continue off half back, turn the ball over, the structure is in place, the defensive structure is in place from the Saints, and they're rebounding back inside 50 very quickly. Do they change personnel? We see Mel Jeske getting the ball out. He's one of the great uh, halfbacks of the. Uh, competition over the last 10 years or so. Does it become a personnel change or do they have to drag some players out so they've got some targets to kick it to? Well, I think, I mean, you can uh, flip a few players around. I wouldn't mind getting, seeing some more experience get back there. I think Swallow going back there in a leadership role would be very good. But it comes back to, to the individual. The, the kicking efficiency will look after itself once the work rate is, is ramped up and I think they need to address that at half time. If they can come out and put their head over the ball, win the contested possessions, which they got smashed in that second term, then things will start to turn around. But at the moment, they're getting embarrassed by the Saints. The Saints look super in this uh, first half of football. Absolutely, and their leadership right now uh, will be being questioned down in the room. They're going to need uh, some great work from Gary Abbott, who's grabbed the senior players there. And he is uh, desperate to get uh, some extra out of that midfield group. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll look at the Port Adelaide versus Sydney Swan side. And we'll chat with Barry Hall, who will give us a look at this match from a St Kilda perspective. Well, the Saints lead by 47 points at halftime at Metricon Stadium. And this man last week... He had a crack at mark of the year. Right now, though, he has four goals and he kicked them all in the second quarter to blow this game apart, Lynchy. Yeah, it's super impressive effort from uh, big Josh Bruce. That allows Nick Rewalt to get up the ground. So uh, I think very, really important role that he's playing. Over in Adelaide, there's another uh, very important game uh, between two of the uh, Premiership contenders. 
And it's Port Adelaide 4-2, 26, uh, trailing the Sydney Swans, who got off to a fly, 7-2, 44. Yeah, they'd be looking to bounce back after a disappointing round one against Frio, Port Adelaide, and they have been slow out of the blocks. The intensity for the Sydney Swans around the ball has been very good, similar to what we've seen here by the Saints, and they've been able to capitalise on the scoreboard as well. Big Kurt Tippett getting involved, and enough strength to get the ball over to his teammate. Another nice snap. So great start from the Swans, and I'm sure has put Port Adelaide on the back foot. Back foot. It'll be interesting to see what Port Adelaide have got uh, left in the tank at half time because, and Fremantle tomorrow actually yeah. when they take on Geelong because uh, I witnessed a street brawl over in Western yeah. Australia. It went for two hours and that would have been uh, really exacting. And there was plenty of celebrations there with Paddy Ryder getting his uh, first goal for Port Adelaide after crossing over from Essendon. So it looks like a very excited man. He'll be hoping that his team gets a bit closer to the Swans in the second half. It's all about the tall forwards down on the boundary line. One of the great tall forwards, uh, Barry Hill has been pretty impressed with what you've seen, Bass. Yeah, I have. Uh, look, it's been a, a fantastic performance from the Kilda Footy Club. Not so much from the Gold Coast Suns' point of view. I'd hate to be in those rooms as a player. He'd be, they'll be getting their, uh, their, their pants pulled down at this stage. But, uh, look, it's, it's been a story. has been Josh Bruce. I'm not yep. sure whether you blokes have noticed him in this first half, but <laughs> geez, he's been fantastic. He has absolutely turned this game on its head. Four goals in that second second term. He's had nine disposals, five contested, but I'm just really impressed with his marking ability. We know he's a competitor. He's 196 centimetres, and we know he's a real competitor. We've seen him play down back before, but to throw him up there, it's almost become a bit of a masterstroke from Alan Richardson's point of view. You put him up there, you relieve a bit of pressure from Nick Rewalt, and he's starting to, starting to produce some goals and take some really, really good masks. So, what a masterstroke it's been from Alan Richardson. And he's done it on uh, their two key defenders. Uh, started on Rory Thompson, and then they put uh, May back on him. And then finally, Sam Day had to go back into defence. So he, he's done it on the lot. Yeah, well, he has. Look, he's, he's, he's taken those good defenders and uh, taken them to the cleaners in that second term. We all seen a dominant performance from him. Look, it's a real feather in his cap, too, that, you know, from the first round, um, you know, his, his game in the first round, yep. um, you know, clubs are really starting to look at him. So what a feather in his cap. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, both sides do produce. As you can see, the Saints lead by 47 points. That's right, 47 points at half time. Matty Campbell to take us through the second half after this break. Welcome back to Metricon Stadium. The fans are a little bit shell-shocked in that first half. I guess some of them can take heart the fact that uh, the Giants today against Melbourne were five goals down, kicked 14 goals in a row to run out comfortable winners. And the Saints, well, they're in rare territory. They're 47 points up at half time. Yeah, well, the Gold Coast Suns are, are going to have to replicate uh, the 18th team in the competition, GWS, and have a massive effort like we saw then. But from the Suns' point of view, we spoke pre-game about making this a fortress. If they're going to surge into the finals in the next couple of years, they've got to win most of their games. We know in 2013 they won six. 2014 it was seven. They lost a few late with Gary Ablett being out. But they've got to rectify this. But it comes back to the real basic things that they would have addressed at halftime. And it's all about work rate. And that's nowhere near the level at the moment. Yeah, got to win the ball, got to get it out of the centre and get it inside forward 50 to give their forwards uh, half a chance. Rory Thompson looks as if uh, he's been pushed forward. Gary Ablett uh, is forward as well. Underway for the second half, and Longer almost got boot to ball. He's dumped out of it. Armitage, what a second quarter for him. Stephen can't grab it. And Swallow might win the free kick. He's thrown into the ground after he pushed through. And away goes Swallow. Just pulled the kick, so he allowed his forward in Lynch to run onto it. That's the way you deliver into the forward 50. That is a great start. Desimplify everything. And just get the thing in there and give these blokes a chance. And a great confidence booster for Tom Lynch. We saw that he dropped a few marks that he would have eaten easily last year. Just a little bit uh, off his uh, best at the moment. But this could be just the confidence booster he needs and the team. Tom Lynch, we're right behind him, 50 metres out, directly in front. No confidence booster there. He hasn't scored, yes, he's managed to behind. Well, let's see how uh, tough they uh, want to defend here and how much they want to keep this ball Secure inside. Secure to go the huddle here, Jerry. And that's right. They're the real indicators, what you do when you haven't got the ball or the ball's in dispute. The, the offensive stuff usually will look after itself. Gee, that worked. They worked that well. They did, didn't they? They yeah. put some preparation into that. And I don't think the Gold Coast were expecting anything like that. Spot on. 
year he got free. It's only one kick. The next couple are the ones that count. No pressure on Rewald. Allowed to just cruise up the ground. Well, it's staggering if you're not prepared for a, a huddle. I mean, you think you'd work through all those. I'm sure they have. Just back to Fisher. Rory. Thank you. Just working their way through it at the moment. And I like this for them, Saints. Play on. Take their time until they get an opportunity. Loney's kick just a little bit wide for Weller, so boundary throw in. There's Mavuela, former Gold Coast son. son. He was one of the 17-year-old priority picks. One of the first players to actually sign with the Gold Coast Suns. Outside the locals. Longer did well. Armitage gets it from Weller. Got a call out wide. Jack Stephen just missed it. Just a little fumble. And Swallow got a hot handball from Riscatelli, but somehow it fell for Prestia. Good take by Martin. Controlled it well. Lynch one on one over the back. No one there just yet. Here comes Miller's got speed. And wrong side of the post again. But he's running hard. Oh, that's Garlett. Sorry, I should say now. Uh, so there's been a sub made. Well, those little half chances just aren't going the Suns' way at the moment. But the good thing, the game is being played in their forward half. It looks like Jared Harbrow has come from the ground and being subbed out. We'll get uh, Barry Hall to chase that one up. Well, that's a concern because he had 20 a big, disposals, yeah. and a big second term. So, yeah, he was winning the ball in that second quarter when no one else was. Garlett's out there now. Big Steve May comes on with a big punch. And for memory, I think he had 12 in that second term. Just a round off a... Of, Really nice uh, first half with 20 disposals. Back one Back one oh, yeah, so struggling there. Confirm that uh, it's uh, Ahmed Saad. But... Saad. Saad appeared to be uh, staggering off the ground after a possible head knock. Good Good dazed. Kick along the ground. Saad still struggling. Oh, Saad, yeah. Not exactly sure what happened, just the, we saw the result. Let's take a look. This contest is he here. Is he caught one there? That oh, it? yeah, backhander from go. May. Just an accidental clip to the right ear, and he's just cut him off uh, with the head spinning a little. Armitage continues to be fierce at the footy. Swallow on the up to Ablett. Quickly to Riscatelli. Tight for room. Floating ball, well read by Fisher, as usual. On. Big switch here. Over to Dempster. He's got Nunes going for him. And further afield, he's got Sinclair. So, choice of jacks. Doesn't mind working hard, Sinclair. Yep. Nunes in. The tackle, though. And he's wrapped up. He'll have a ball up. Tackle over the top there. Came from the men on the ground. No, Saad. Saad. Yeah, great work from Saad. He, he did enough, but didn't give away a free kick and has caused the stoppage. Great work. So Rory Thompson has gone as the deepest forward. Tom Lynch remains uh, forward. Do you think Tom Lynch would benefit from a bit of a run in the ruck? I think they just need to get his confidence up, get the ball in his hand, or at least send him out with the clear direction to crash the packs, get to as many contests as you can in the air, and your job is to make sure it hits the ground. Biscatelli. And a bit of a stalemate at the moment. Not much happening for either side. And then if he gets to enough ball, he's gonna the marks will come. But at the moment, he's dropping marks, and he's not getting to too many contests. Certainly started better in this third term, but... Uh, they really need a lift from one of the dominant players in the competition last year. Very hard to get free here. Very hard for anyone to get clean possession. The umpire's had enough. Michael Riscatelli down on the haunches. Very slowly getting, getting up. It looks like he's uh, pretty sore as well. Long is doing a good job in the ruck. Sexton a bit slow to get rid of it. Swallow. Martin back to Swallow. He's got no help though. Uh, again. Holding the ball. Good defensive pressure from the Saints. Fair forward. And the half has really been working hard to keep the ball in. Yeah, and the first tackle there again was Nick Rewalt. Yeah. I mean, amazing that he pushes up, lays plenty of tackles, although not accredited for all of them, but he's certainly working extremely hard. Billings kick onto the chest of Weller. They've got a runner here in Dunstan. Wants to move it quickly, plays on, wheels around, kicks it in long to the man of the moment in Bruce. That'll do. He's going to line up for five. He's playing with him at the moment. It's 
Stephen May is a very good defender, strong body in those sort of contests, but he just moved him out of the road, protected the drop zone, took an easy chest mark low down. And subs have been activated, boys. Uh, Nathan Wright has been subbed into the game. Or Fina, who's got the red vest on, I'd say it would be sad. Yeah, I think you might be right there, Barry. And here's the mark again. Just turns May around and protects that drop zone very easily. This for five. First goal, though, for the third quarter. He loves it. What a night for Josh Bruce. Well played to Josh, but the most disappointing element of that uh, passage was the lack of run from the mids of the Gold Coast to get back into his place. Have a look here now. You can see blokes jogging, including the skipper, and there's heaps of space here that they have just got to get back into. I mean, this is just uh, nowhere near the level required, and it's uh, on the big stage. It's a big stage for the Gold Coast. It's on their home ground. It's in front of their home crowd. It's round one. And the intense interest in how they responded to last week was going to always mean that everyone's taking a look at this. Hallahan's low ball up towards Lynch again. Garlett comes through. Lynch just a half a slip. Garlett again. There he is. On the way out, they this, find a target once This has more. been the difference. Been able to hit targets when coming from deep defence or off half back. May, it's a clever handball to Prestia. Lemons is forward. Just get much sure with the ball, aren't they? Uh, Jack Stephen, the fifth gap. Well, they didn't turn one mistake into two on that occasion. They missed the target once, but they mopped up. Clever kick, Savage. Dunstan. Curran can go over the top to his skipper. Now Chesky got on the way. Well, you spot on there, Matty. It was a chip kick that he tried to pull to make sure he hit Nick Rewalt and thus was smothered in the end by Mal Chesky. But he was trying to look after his skipper. had worked hard to find space. Hassad. Just resting up. Probably appears to be dazed. A bit of concussion, maybe. Well done again by Longer to work to the front, winning the knockdown. But Martin gets there first for the Suns. Hallahan forced to kick it quickly. And standing in the way is Shenton, and he wants to play on quickly. Savage roosts it in long. Where's Bruce? Not this time. Day back. Good grab. Stood his ground. Yeah. Again, this is the one. Is he going to be forced long or hit targets? He goes the corridor, aggressive, yep. but finds it. Good vision to find Lemons. Now yeah, we've seen these blow up in their face. Two on one, two yeah. wins out. And Overlooked again. the shorter option, the shorter option was there. Well, it ended up it was a 45 metre around the body banana kick. That's Hit not, hope. not high percentage. But again, that was forced because of the pressure. Well, they've Slowing stopped the scoring yeah. from the Saints, but the Saints have essentially just uh, put the cue in the rack a little bit, just trying to kill a bit of time. Saints kick the only goal for the quarter. Nunes. Good run from behind. The man on the ground, the new man on the ground in Nathan Wright. Into a pocket, hoping Billings can run onto it, but wasn't to be. In trouble. Little benefit that I doubt, just Colin Jasny. Great chase again. Swallow missed kicked it, but it fell for Hallahan. Oh, missed. missed him. That was a 15 metre pass, missed the target, brought a five. Pressed here to help out. Riscatelli again. And he missed his target. The Saints should score on the way back here. They have to score. Right. If he got a go he could have gone to the goal square and found his man, but he went for Revolt. Just overran it. Had the opportunity to bounce there and take it all the way. he get another go. Yeah, diving mark for Wright. He's been watching from the first day. He said, let me out there. Let me have some fun. Oh, and that's I a free kick. Yeah. Nick Revolt. Just through weight of numbers and, and effort is the reason Nick Revolt's got a free kick now. They kept peppering the ball in there. They were slightly missing the target, but the Gold Coast Suns couldn't get the ball out. They, they stunned the Suns. Continually had, turned it over. They had to know that Revolt was going to be the target. And well, Wright had the option of just placing it into space with three Gold Coast Suns in close vicinity and another two just observing. Just really like the way... Um, Richardson, Alan Richardson's using Revolt. Yeah, it's good, isn't it's it? It's just really smart. 
He's bringing other players into the game, and then he comes back with his courage like this. Josh Bruce likes it. Yep, lines up for his second. <laughs> Although, that's let us down as well as the coach. And it does happen at times, but you can justify that because of Nick Rewald's work rate. Because he gets up the ground, he covers... He basically runs a half marathon. I doubt Rob DiCostello would be kicking goals until you required right halfway through a marathon. Yes, yeah, spot on. And he doesn't respond well to a tackle at the 19k mark either. Dick. It's the best excuse <laughs> I could come up with for uh, Nick there, but he should have put that away. He well, should have. If he put that away, he puts the Suns away. Well, that's right. And you, we could have seen the floodgates over, yep. couldn't we? We could have seen the Suns just uh, try and play out time, and the Saints have some uh, real fun. I heard a bit of squeaking in that second term. I'm sure it was the floodgates. Maybe they're not uh, completely open, well, but they're open. ajar. There's a big crack going down the seam. May went through. Armitage to tidy up. Dunstan working into the game nicely. Wider out to memory. Uses the ball well, Dunstan. Yep. With a lot of class about him. Short kick. And he didn't quite make it. Juggled over the line, according to the umpire. Well, it's 21-5 under like tested marks, boys, in favour of the Saints. So they're just controlling the footy at this stage. And there's Ahmad Saad. He's, he's taking the 20-minute concussion rule. So they're going to take their 20 minutes, yep. see, see if he's with it or not, and, uh, and make a decision. Gold Coast free kick against Stephen and go to Prestia. Part of the concussion test was maybe the doctor asked him, um, can you read the scoreboard? And he thought he was concussed because they're 52 points he's 52 up. 52 down. Kick down the line. Dempster's in good position. Fisher was there. Fisher almost threw it back to Delaney. Good pressure, good tackle from Riscatelli, and the smother came from Lynch. Something might happen here. Ablett. May, but the pressure again. Delaney swamps him. And they swarm the Saints. There's a bit of pressure, a bit of push and shove, and the Saints closing them down. Even Gaz can't find space. When you've got such a lead at half time, you want someone to take hold of the game. And David Armitage has done that for his coach. Mm. Yep. He's had a good game, and he's. this is a really important time. They don't want to let the Suns get back into this game. And Armitage's work right along with Weller and Fisher and Savage off that half-back line. They've really uh, just led the way for this uh, group of players. There goes Zach Smith's way. They played advantage, caught back quite rightly. So Smith with the free kick, but it's going to take his best kick. He's not going to make the distance. I might uh, pull one of these kicks to the top of the goal square. But the Saints will have big numbers back to block up that space. Oh, here Whoops. we go. And there's no one ahead. He's going to have to go back. So Jack Billings is going to have to go backwards, and he did. And a hit and hope. Hope. Oh, top spinner. That he can run onto it. Membry gets a good bounce. In the goal he goes. Oh. And misses. Can you believe it? The eyes just lit up. He had the perfect bounce just bounced out in front of him. But he was wound up, didn't have enough uh, composure just to steady up. So it's just a couple of opportunities in the last three or four minutes to really bury the Suns. Not that it's probably not going to happen anyway, because they're on top again here. Right. Two on one situation. But they just need to put this game on ice. Oh, free kick the hold. Just a little bit. Didn't disguise it well enough there. Now Chesky. Through the middle of the ground, Riscatelli. Umpire in the way. That'll be looked at. Swallow. Bruce has gone down back. Well, he can play anywhere at the moment. Garlett with the tackle over the top of Fisher. And, boys, if things could get any worse for the Gold Coast Suns, uh, Jared Harbrow, left shoulder, subbed out of the game. He's going to have scans on Monday. So that's that's really bad signs. He's one of their better players. Mm. Oh, that's not good. And experience across halfback. Presti around the corner at last for the Gold Coast. It's been a long time coming. Well, I think we're all sighing with uh, relief with that goal that they've responded. If you have looked at inside 50s, it's uh, still four to six. Gold Coast tra trailing. 38 possessions to 53 trailing. Hasn't been anything like the response we were uh, expecting. Respondees have been the Saints, but this is hopefully the start for some supporters of a run of three or four goals to give them something to take out of the match. 
23 disposals. 15 of those handballs have gone for Prestia. But it's, uh, the mar all they've done is bring the margin back to what it was at halftime. But it still is 47 points, and if they can back it up again, the Suns, they just need to put this game to bed. The Saints need to finish it off. Lynch into the ruck, like that move. He needs to find some body and some football. Robert in by hand to Armitage. Short Bruce. Good kick by Bruce to the lead of Membry. Moves well, Membry. Bashir on the boundary line, you're uh, listening to the players coming off the ground. I imagine it's like a morgue down there on one side and a carnival on the other. Yeah, there's a funeral on one side, Jerry. It's, uh, yeah, it's terrible, but uh, look, it's, they need some leaders to stand up for Gold Coast Suns. You know, you, you've got to lead from the front and it's got to come from the top, so I just want to see some leaders respond in some way. Membry had a set shot earlier in the match. It was a disappointing finish. See what he can do from this. Runs out to the right at 50 metres line. At the 50 metre line, I should say, and hooks it back right to left for the behind. One goal three to one goal two for the turn in favour of the Saints. Have to see a response. As Baz said, you need a leader oh, to stand up. Over the line, yeah. Yeah, that's just panic. It's a big no ball. Again, there's a lack of composure. We've seen that almost from the opening bounce of round one. And Nick Malcheski, all Australian Premiership player, barking instructions, but just uh, couldn't have had any options at all. Bruce down, hoping for someone to run onto it first to it though, Allahan, but it's going to come back pretty quickly. Another stretching mark by Wright. And he just missed his target over the top. Allahan again, this time by hand. Benno, and quiet. May, down low, takes the mark. Yeah, got the defensive sweepers are in place. And Delaney for the spoil. Miller. Hopeful handball to Garlett, who runs onto it, to Bennell. Nothing up forward. Yep. And he's gone. He managed to just get the handball away. And in the end, St Kilda, once again, closed down the Suns, forced it out of bounds. Two-way running from St Kilda has been superb. Well, that's right, and that's why the ball's gone over the line, because Bennell looked up, and there was no one there deep. There was only St Kilda players who worked really hard to be deep defence to make sure they stopped that kick if it went in. Riscatelli to Collegesny, who saw May on his own, and May should make the distance. We know he's a long kick. Just a question of accuracy. Keep, uh, or give the fans something to cheer about. Well, they still need to give themselves a, a sniff and just get back another three goals on the Saints up until three-quarter time, and they just go into the last quarter with some hope. But the way the game, the trend of the game has been going, you wouldn't think this is uh, going to go through. The trend of the game is it's a, it's a point to the left-hand side and secure yeah. to get it, get it out of the defensive 50 easily. Nice. Nice. All right, first pick's been yeah. completed. Yeah, it was a good call. It was on an odds-on call, but it was very nice. And then we'll just see. They were set up the huddle, and they'll work hard to find space. This first kick will be easy. Stay tuned. Matthew Campbell will deliver the Tats Lotto numbers shortly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, well, they've got it reasonably deep. Uh, maybe a chance for the Suns, though. Touch by hands. What about a return? Tuke Miller goes on first. Tap down by Longer, off the ground by Swallow, and Garlick the sub in the right place at the right time to take advantage of that is within range. So a little twist here. Is there a little twist in the tail, Matthew? Can you create, can you mind imagine a little twist? Well, I think I'm, I'm very impressed with what I've seen from him in the preseason. I'd back him from here. I reckon you should put one of your houses on the goal here, Jared. Well, I tell you what, all six bedrooms, every star, every uh, march starts with one small step, and this one has got to go through. Garlett from inside 50. He's pushed it to the right, though. And once again, the Suns missing another set shot. So they're out to uh, five goals, 10 now. And they're not getting their shots deep. Yeah. They're only just getting inside 50. We'll see, inside 50 count is seven to eight, but they're not deep entries from, uh, from the Gold Coast Suns at all. Huddle back on board, and uh, they've got the first kick away. They've got the second kick. They're hitting targets, the Saints. The Geary. Suns, uh, it's almost been a rarity when they've hit the target. Gone to Geary three times off the huddle. Either the first or second kick. Big spoil from Thompson. 
big fist. Well, stays in. It's the sort of night that the Saints are having. The ball just bounces back for them. And away they go. Look at the confidence here. Look at the run. Jack Stephen. Oh. Right. <laughs> he's still got oh, it. Oh, he's got a clip as well. A free kick. He should keep going. He has been called to play on. <laughs> he looks up and says, all right, I can hear you. Did have it a long time. Still going St Kilda, though. Taken by Robertson on the left. Ablett came out to spoil. Crowd get involved, trying to cheer the champ on, get him involved in the game. See two on one again. Well, he got it through. The kick was a good one. Miller let him down with the mark. Three on two. Yep. Numbers every time there's a contest. The Saints have got the numbers. They've all got the jogging behind Matthew yep. and Lynchy. Yeah, four or five, five arrived late. Players. Second to the contest. It was four on one when the umpire just picked that ball up. Smith wins that one. Took Miller on the up to Swallow, who's worked pretty hard in this third quarter. May went down, didn't trap the ball. Geary. Fumble. Want to probably go out of bounds. Fumble came earlier on from Jack Nunes. They've stopped to a walk, the Saints, but the only thing they can hang their hat on is the Suns just haven't fired a shot. It's only been a one point quarter. Well, we spoke about what reaction we expected, and Suns gave us a bit in the first quarter, but it's just proved to be a facade. They need to finish off this game, open up some options, and give their coach and themselves something to work into next week with. Now, if somehow it all comes together and they can manage a massive run on and give themselves a chance to win, well, that's well and good, but they've still got to get some positive out of it to front up the training tomorrow morning, I suspect at about 7 a.m. Now, does that out on the full? Did he get there in time? Just got a hand on it. Yep. Just before it went over the line. Of course the Saints touched that one before it went <laughs> over the line. But so, you, you're spot on. They've got to salvage something out of this as a collective and as individuals. There's a number of individuals really got to put their hand up at the moment and lead from the front. Billings. Now, that kick in danger against Nunes. Martin. Oh, Ooh, push it. There's a push and it's over the back anyway. It should be a goal oh, to the South. And another miss by Gold Coast this time. Big May. 5 12 now for the Gold Coast. But they've locked it in, they've kept it in. Small steps. Well, that's the last five minutes the game's been played there. Left of screen in the forward half or the forward 50 for the Gold Coast Suns, but they're just not scoring. One goal six for the quarter. Good spoil. Probably a little bit strong and Broughton sees it over the line. He's been quiet, Broughton. One goal six, a four goal three quarter. Just gives them half a sniff. Might see that dribble attempt at goal by May on Sunday night, maybe Lynchy. What do you think? Yeah, it might come up tomorrow at the meeting, I would have thought too. He's got to run it. Well, oh, that's a throw. Just about. That was a double-handed throw. Well up. Sard can go. He's got a man over the top, Lemons, who should kick a goal. Savage comes at him. Lemons going to miss everything, is he? Yep. Out on the floor. Be frustrated for Rodney Ead. The, one, the positive is they've taken control of the momentum of the game, but just not putting the score on the board. Just can't finish. No, just can't finish it at all. Well, they won't contest the ball, Lynchy, which is a real positive, but on the outside, the Saints have got them. Before this game, you'd think that's right up the Suns' alley, but yep. skill errors and the pressure the Saints put on have been fantastic. Yeah, the intensity has, has lifted from the Suns. They're causing mistakes from the Saints. But we spoke at half-time about their efficiency by foot. The Suns still going at 49%. Well, Colin Jansen, he's no pressure there, and he goes back to Malcheski and misses him. Yep. So all of a sudden, the pressure just builds up the ground. All right, they've worked it out here today. And he can chip it over the top to Garlett. Probably cut back through the middle. No, he's going to slow it down. Again, St Kilda set up their defensive structure really early. Good coverage. They've got to get the far side, sit, uh, the Suns, where they've got spare players, but they can't get there. Lynch wanted it long. Hands in the back. Big shove in the back. Just out of Nick. 
Tom at the moment just hasn't got his confidence to jump at the ball. She's there far too early. The Saints have set up their basically their zone defence, yeah. and the ball's on this side of the ground. They essentially they have to long bomb it to a lynch, and that means it's a three-on-one situation. Or they've got to go to the other side of the ground. And you look across the other side of the ground, and they're not working hard enough to give the option. Here's a chance down the line. They get a chance. Now, can Lynch go back and at least deliver another goal for them to just whittle away at this lead? 1-6, one, one out in the full for this quarter. And this is a big ass. You don't have to kick this one from just outside of 50. That's 15. Margin, 44 points. This to get it under at 40 mark before three-quarter time. Another behind, another one to the left. A better kick, but uh, still the same result. Okay, let's see if we go the huddle, which I suspect we will, and Geary gets Where's on Geary the end go? of it. Yeah. Oh, well, well, Sam Fisher's just out. broken Fish. early. He's, he's played the 200 game card and said, I'm <laughs> off. Yeah. There's a free one out here, but yeah. he got covered in the end. Yep. And because he went early, that broke down the huddle yeah. totally. Yeah. And Matty Ahmed Saad has had his 20 minutes and hasn't come up, so he's been subbed out of the game. Thanks, Barry. Sard gone for the day as the uh, earlier sub was Harbrow, as Barry mentioned. Scans on a shoulder issue. And they're looking at the boundary of the Saints and found it. Just to reinforce Ahmed Saad, he got a backhander from uh, Stephen May in a marking contest. Totally accidental, but we're seeing stars after that contest. Just ticked down to three-quarter time. So good work by Sakuna. As the guys have mentioned, it's been mainly played at the left-hand side, mainly at the Gold Coast Ford 50. But St Kilda have maintained the control on the scoreboard. It was 47 at half time. It's 43 at quarter time. Effectively, they've doubled their score. Work rate lifted from the Gold Coast Suns, but they've got no polish. There's nothing on the outside at all. And we've been banging on about it all day. It's about work rate, but also their kicking efficiency well down on the AFL standard. They've got plenty of work to do at three quarter time to even be able to hang their hat on something at the end of this game. Saints just a quarter away from a win. They're up by 43. A pretty happy huddle, I'd suggest, at the uh, St Kilda part of the ground. In control on the scoreboard, 43-point leaders after leading by 47 at half-time. So they're uh, not too far away now from their first win. Five goals, 13 to the Gold Coast. They had their opportunities in that second quarter, but in that third quarter, but couldn't quite put them through. Armitage just had a terrific game, 29 disposals. What are the stats tell you, Alistair? Well, time in forward half has gone back a little bit towards the Gold Coast. Sun certainly has been dominated throughout the night, and in particular in that second quarter. And uh, they're at 53%. Disposals are starting to even up again. The third term was, uh, there's a lot of positives for the Suns. But the main thing was the Saints didn't hurt them when they got their opportunities. Yeah. Neither did the Suns. Just gives them a, a remote sniff at three-quarter time. For the Saints, Jared, there's been some good individual performances. We've seen um, you know, Bruce bob up with four goals, Fisher his second quarter. But Armitage right the way through has been brilliant. He has been, and he really uh, produced straight after uh, that halftime break. Was it when it was important for them to have some leaders to uh, show that this was not yet over. And he just uh, worked out. I've really been impressed. It's taken him a fair while to get to uh, the required level. But the last uh, year and a half, two years, I think uh, he's turned himself into a uh, terrific player. He's their new Lenny Hayes. Uh, they needed someone to fill the breach that Lenny uh, left vacant. And uh, he has come through pretty nicely. Yep, centre uh, clearances a couple. Seven uh, clearances. 18 of his 29 possessions have been contested. A man that loved contested possession was Barry Hall. What do you think will happen in this last quarter, Barry? I don't know about contested possession, Matty, but uh, look, I, I used to love the easy one over the top. But look, from the Suns' point of view, very ordinary performance at this stage. It's been the turnover ball. They're a very skillful side, but the turnovers have been terrible. But it's got a lot to do with the Saints' pressure as well. They've been absolutely fantastic. Ten goals, five from turnovers. So that's a real feather in the cap for this young Saints side. Geez, they're a hungry young group. I want to see a little bit of that from the, the Gold Coast Suns' leaders. I want to see bodies flying. That's what I want to see if I'm rocket eating this last quarter. Oh, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, Rodney Head's going to finish up the end of the game and he's going to look at the scoreboard, he's going to look at the stats, whatever, but the fact of life is they're going to be 0 2. Well, oh, absolutely, and that's a long way back. I mean, uh, they've, they've had games against St Kilda and uh, Melbourne to start with, two teams at the bottom of the ladder last year. Uh, no disrespect to them, but you would think that if you're going to 
entertain playing finals football. You want to knock over round one, round two, when you've got basically the bottom two teams from last year. Smith was brilliant in the first quarter, but Longer has worked his way back on top in the ruck jewels. Great performance by him. Final quarter underway. It falls for Smith. I'm sure it was a contest there, but... Yeah, it was a line ball. It could have come back, but it's, I guess the parameters they've got is whether or not it stays within the circle. Yeah, it stayed close. That's what it did. Floating kick forward by Bennell. May almost the one-hander. Savage back. Quick hands. Rockets it back out to Dempster, who forces the kick wide out to Jack Stephen. Wanted to move it quickly. Good to see uh, Stevens without uh, that injury that hampered him for most of last year. Running freely again. A little champ for St Kilda. Bennell gets it from Prestia. He's got Martin in the middle. Spots him. And he walks around Longer. He's on his left boot. Lynch a run at it. And again, the spoil was a good one. It came from Delaney this time. Lynch slow to get up. Stephen again. The fall for Savage here. Hasn't he improved? Yeah. Uh, really taken on that position across half bank. Curran. It's got Bruce over the back. Spots him. Good kick. Bruce can jump at it. Gets it again. Gets up. Kicks his sixth. That's a huge night for Josh Bruce. He doesn't look like dropping. The, the no. hands are sticky. sticky. We heard from Fisher at uh, half time saying he looks like he's got sticky hands. They're very confident to go to him. And we see here, you said spot on. Shane Savage played a really good game last week. He's continued on with that. His run off halfback's really important. And uh, Curran drives the ball in long here. And that is a very good grab. And just gets up. Easy as you do. Easy as you like. Josh Bruce in this game has stood up and has put the rest of the competition on notice to yep. say, I can play. Well, he put him on notice a little bit last yep. week when he took that hanger. But uh, this is a much more rounded performance by him and uh, Savage he was the steak knives in the McEnvoy uh, deal and uh, he's proving after 12 months in the system after Richardson that he's uh, he wants to make a name for himself he wants to build on a career we talked about uh, round 22 2012 since they kicked eight goals yeah. first Saints player since round 11 2012 to kick six goals a nice just 50 meter penalty you can see there just in a little late I think it might have been Dunstan came in a little Late bump on Malcheski. So for the quick answer. Well, for many years he was a designated kicker from uh, yep. this sort of region, just lurking around the back for the handball. I think he'd uh, put this one straight through. Although the way they've been kicking, they yep. have been missing these set shots. They started kicking well with Ablett and Riscatelli, and they continue to miss to the left-hand side. I don't know why. It's got different ends of the ground. That one just catching the woodwork. Throws up a lot of challenges, uh, football. Nick Melcheski has taken the decision to leave the Swans. And he's written a massive story in uh, football with his uh, performance at that particular club. But he now faces a, ma a major challenge, doesn't he? Big money uh, recruit. He's got uh, a four-year deal. And he's got a club. He's come to a club that's in a real hole at the present time, which you know, be looking to him to lead them out of that hole. Yeah, and a lot of his role is going to be after the siren and yeah. before the next siren. How... He works with these young players to get them back to a level that it's, is expected of the Gold Coast Suns in 2015. Great work by St Kilda again to close it down. Geary's running, the kick from Dunstan finds him. If he can get up quickly, he'll have options. Jesus played a good game, that's good. Yep. Drills it low to Revolt. That's a nice pass. Didn't just, again, the composure of the, the ball users with the Saints has been a lot better than the Suns. He could have blazed away. Uh, he had a number of players at the top of the goal square, but just pulled the kick, honoured the lead from his uh, skipper. So here's the challenge for Alan Richardson. He's got this bloke he's trying to get him through another year and maybe another year after that. But he wouldn't want to take him off the ground too early to signal that the game is won. Yep. But he's sore. He's uh, had a problem with the shoulder. He's got a problem with the hip. You saw that. He was slow to get up, wasn't he? Well, we just saw Malczewski, a veteran, miss at one end. And we see the veteran for Secura goal at the other. That is the story of tonight. So the question for you, Lynch, is when do you take Nick off the ground? 
or don't you? Just leave him there. Well, I think he still go through the process of having the three interchanges and not just um, putting him on ice just yet. But we know in modern times the goal kicker normally goes off for a spell. Yeah. Let it be an extended spell and get in his ear. Yeah. Nothing silly late in the game. But part of why Bruce has been so yeah, good that's, that's exactly right. is because Rewald has put so much pressure on the ball carries up the field and caused turnovers. He's out of a size when you see him uh, there compared to Nick Rewald. No, uh, he's 10 metres behind and there's a bit of angulation error. Just going back to uh, mathematics so uh, that I failed in year 11. <laughs> yeah. He's a pretty big kid. Writing down angulation there, Jared. Just uh, for future <laughs> reference. Not sure we'll bring it out again. No, I'm not sure either. He is uh, Garlet on the way out for the Gold Coast. He finds his target in the middle in Malcheski. Oh, dear. Disappointing from Malcheski to just, under no pressure, miss a target. But they've got it back. Riscatelli. Martin worked under it. So two on one wins out again. This time Dempster with the mark. The help came earlier. From Geary. Armitage. Oh, Tommy Curran. He just uh, relaxed on that one and yeah. spilled it over the line. Armit Saab with the red vest in the background. He would be filthy, Armit Saab, missing out on the picnic. Yeah, well, he got a couple of goals too. He's playing good. Longer. Stolen by Riscatelli, who. Has his kick smothered and goes again for the tackle. Shouldering arms, Robertson, Dunstan, Armitage, confidence from the Saints. Curran to Stephen, who gets through somehow and gives it back to Curran. Might fall for Loney yet. It does. Good grab. Bruce has got a bit of space. If he can get to him. Oh, he gets around. Then off the outside of the left boot, puts too much work on the ball. Oh. It's a wide. It was close, but he just did everything he could to get onto that left boot and drive it in long quickly. He, uh, he'll get a turnover against his name, but it was only by a few centimetres. But he's a sharp player, Loney. He's a real picker. Right. They had two on one here, the Suns, and they went to where they were outnumbered two to one. Really poor option. Beautiful work by Dempster to tap it down to Fisher. In turn to Savage. Next in the queue is Revolt. Next in the queue for him is Jack Loney. And he just lays it off, hoping for memory, but Garlett saw it coming. Look at the chase, though, from Loney. He's back on it. He's hungry. Collar Jasny. Thompson spills it. A long video session, I reckon, for the Suns. Yeah, I think that'll follow a uh, long session where the coach says, bring your runners. Tape. I know it's all about rehab at the moment in uh, football, but there are some times where you've got to make an exception. Well, and it depends what they did last week. You probably won't do the same this week because <laughs> it didn't work. Is there anything in a new coach just two games in and you're still, I mean, I know this I is not about idea. systems, but you're when still this, learning. I remember when the same bloke took over the Sydney Swans. Yeah. And there was a couple of horrible beltings early. They played uh, off in the grand final. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. One goal, two for Tom Lynch. It hasn't been his night. It's good to see him back out there. But he's got pretty high standards. He'll be disappointed. He's been well beaten. But he kicks truly this time. And it's a rare goal for the Gold Coast. And in many ways, Matthew, your thoughts on he's got high standards is what Rodney Eade is going to rely upon. Each and every individual out there going home and assessing where they're at in their footy life and just asking themselves, what do I want to uh, have as my trademark? Because right now we're seeing rubbish. That's right, yeah, nowhere near the standard. But, uh, yeah, good to see Tom Wynn still presented on that lead. Hasn't been grabbing them so far tonight, but good to go back and kick one. Seven disposals for his two goals. And this, as much as anything, is about preparation for round three yeah. I and mean, to get something to actually to hang your hat on so you can prepare for next week's game clever knock by day down to Riscatelli but just as he kicked it he was slung so it goes off wide to Nunes Savage again the springboard off the half back line he's right thanks David Hall thanks Harley Hall <laughs> a 
Membry the target. And all players happy to see it over the line. Let's take a look what's up ahead for the Gold Coast, Alistair. Well, this is what they've got to prepare for. They've got Geelong, and uh, never an easy game against Geelong, especially on the rebound after last week's disappointment. Then GWS in, in Canberra. Sydney. Canberra. Yeah, or Canberra, sorry. Brisbane Lions here at Metricon Stadium, then the Adelaide Crows. Right again. Jack Billings. Over there to Jack Nunes. Over there to Jack Stephen. We've got two more to go. <laughs> this one's the Joker. And he's the veteran. He went from spades to hearts to the Joker. Bruce. Membry's there. Over to Dunstan. Quick hands. Probably too quick. Loney. Saad. Adam Saad. Somehow got it through to Thompson. They're still chasing, still tackling, and yeah. caused a turnover. That's exactly right. They just didn't give up on it. And they'll go back the other way. Just a handball from Billings. A little bit tired out in front of Fisher. Put him under pressure. Garlick gets him from Martin. One-on-one -on -one situation here. Lynch has turned him inside out. Going to line up for his third. And he gets a little bit back in the last quarter, does Tom Lynch. Well, they've finally got a couple of uh, turnover goals, which allows them to look back and say, OK, if we apply some pressure, we're going to be able to uh, create some goals and some goal opportunities. Uh, Lynch here has a look in board. There was a player there. He was prepared to take it on, and fair enough, had a pretty well straight shot at goal. They don't have to watch the tape of the St Kilda side, how they got a majority of their yeah. goals. And that was from pressure, and didn't that matter whether you're the oldest player on the list or the youngest. Two in a row, a rarity for the Gold Coast, and both of them for Tom Lynch. It's been since the first quarter since they've kicked two in a row. Longer, again the win. Stephen, tough one for Revolt. Ricochets back for Broughton. May, Ablett, chase from Bruce. Ablett kicks it to the true centre forward position. Good grab. Very good grab. This time it's right. Shown he's been some, good. Yeah, shown some things since he's come on into the he? game. As he says that, he kicks it straight back to the Gold Coast. Hasn't done a lot wrong. Now Chesky decides oh, nice. to go off the ground. That's not a good sign. Back in again. Realised his error. out there now. Tackle was a pretty good one. Umpire ball it up inside the Suns forward 50. Bit of a run on here at the moment, but scoreboard will tell you the story. They're seven goals down. Well, they're seven goals down, and the game's uh, pretty well out of their grasp, but just still a sniff, maybe. Prestia, around the corner, around the body, through for three in a row for the Gold Coast. Well, he's a real talent, uh, is Prestia. And he had plenty of touches in the first half, but it just wasn't enough collective effort by the Gold Coast for uh, even their high possession winners really to have much effect other than ranking them up on the scoreboard. But, I mean, this is just genuine talent. And this is why the expectation is relatively high, but Gold Coast is able to stop talking about uh, finals and flags from the top right down to the bottom. Just worry about a contested performance. Yeah, that was just individual talent, wasn't yeah. it? It's not, uh, not saying great team performance here, but Prestia finishes off nicely. So a little bit of respectability on the scoreboard here. Just on the sneak there. He uh themselves in front on the contested possessions inside 50s a couple of key indicators just starting to turn I think partly that may be because St Kilda have put the queue in the rack to a certain extent oh, good, good running here though haven't given up on this one Geary's kick out wide to Dempster who drills it low to Bruce good pick beautifully picked up he's got half a dozen goals Sexton he's searching for seven Bruce Tate. lucky under the new interpretation to get away with that one Sexton Miller Bennell in trouble. Broughton, likewise, oh, elbow to the put the fender. Face, I would have thought. The Armitage. Back to Swallow. Bennell. Uh, slow motion. Swallow decides to do it himself. And kick it long into the pocket, hoping for Martin to jump at it. Shenton. Wants the boundary. Martin didn't want it to get there, and it does. 
Actually, I just mentioned that I felt the Saints put the, the cue in the rack. Here's the fend off. Oh, it just slips up. Slips Nothing up. In, in that. But the Saints, defensive, still yeah. working yeah, extremely working hard. hard. They exactly. are working hard. Just probably going to give a little bit of credit to the Suns to work their way back into this quarter. Good handball by Smith to get it to Riscatelli. Squeezes it out. Still in play. Lynch packs it back, hoping for something to happen. Garlett oh, hits the post. That might have got the crowd on their feet a bit because they've got them within four. Yeah, that would have started to narrow the gap a lot. And then you flick back to all their errant shots in the third term third as well. Third term, yeah. Swallow to the bench. A little bit sore. This is sometimes a trap when you slow the ball down. It, it almost uh, is a signal to stop running, stop pressuring. And that's not the way they've controlled the game. No. It has been that fast attack. It's that, been electric the whole night. Yeah, the Suns were the ones that had to take their pace out of the game at certain stages. Well, here's some attack. Here's some run. Right. Beautifully done. Run a long way with the footy. Run 40. He's run a long way, but he's pushed it out in front. Membry's there. Loney's going to arrive. Tate soccer's it clear. Adlett one on one with Billings. Experience v youth. Oh, well done, Jack youth Billings. wins out in that case. Forces the error from Miller. Goes back. Got a man in the middle in Malcheski. Missed him. Oh, nicely done, Dunstan. We'll get onto his left and try and force it off. Ball spills free. Holding the ball. Well, they've lifted finally, the Suns. It was way too late uh, for the coach's view. I mean, still, if they got everything right, they can press. May, some tired bodies out there. Not a little run for him. The sub in Gala. He's done some useful things that's coming on, like right for St Kilda. Forced to kick it up high. Should suit Fisher or Dempster. Dempster the spoil. Martin went without it. Somehow Bennell got it out wide. Riscatelli hoping no one home. They can rebound here if they go quickly. No, they want to slow it down. And they're entitled to slow it down. They've worked the hardest. They're out of fuel. And they're uh, entitled just to <coughs> chop this ball around and kill some time. Spots a man on a lead in Hallahan. Straight shot here brings it back to 29 points. Still a long way to go. Just a lot of ways that Jared. But what it does do, it at least <laughs> puts look at me like that. a little bit of uh, respectability on the scoreboard. And again, but it's saying, false well, respectability. Oh, that, that's right. They've been well and truly outplayed when the game when it counted. Hallahan for the goal. It'd be four in a row. For the Gold Coast. Holds its line. And they're within five goals. Well, you've got to turn it around somewhere. And uh, even if it's just winning a quarter, that is something. It's a positive. And I'm sure that's what Rocket would have said at three-quarter time. Give us something positive. And winning a quarter may be the only thing. They go down to Geelong next week. It may be this 15 minutes that gives them a little bit of self-belief that they can work on and build on through training that gives them a competitive chance next week. But this isn't wasted. Still nice and calm, Alan Richardson, as he should be, even though the crowd have at least got some voice going, given that the Gulf Coast have kicked four goals in a row and they're within 29. Another four or five minutes would be handy for them for the miracle win, but pretty tough from here. Armitage, just lost it. Savage off the ground. Ablett, first in the race. And tapped it out towards Broughton, who was trying to think about a, a shepherd, and that's a win for St Kilda there. Just couldn't 
won't get down low enough. Bennell off the outside of the boot with a check side kick. Goes forward. Right. Sexton got a hand to it. Oh. Almost threw it over the top oh. to Swallow. And that's a good tackle. Well, the tackling has been ferocious. It's been uh, top standard right throughout the night. And here comes St Kilda's next month, and it's the Magpies uh, in round three, followed by the Blues. And they would give themselves a chance in uh, both of those games, followed by the Bombers, who will be starting to hit their uh, straps by about round five physically, you would think. So it'll be a tough challenge. And then the Western Bulldogs, the other team in the competition, that is absolutely pressuring everything that's uh, in dispute. Garner will kick the goal, and the fans are still thinking, still hoping. I'm sure Richo wouldn't mind his players just getting one more goal, just to uh, either get control the tempo, but actually impact the scoreboard, just to put a stop to this. Still the best part of six minutes remaining. And uh, they might look at that uh, stoppage there. The Suns had too many players in space between the stoppage and the goal square. Gee, it's a impressive goal. goal. Well, they've got to do everything right, everything right. They've got to win every clearance. Well, it's amazing, Matty. When you start using the footy properly, they're going at 71% by foot in this in this quarter. So it's amazing when you start using the footy properly, what happens? Yeah, they hadn't done it all night, have they, Barry? They they're, almost won the clearance there. Well, they push Ablett and Malchewski oh, forward. Right, that. Bruce to Armitage. And this might be the breakout that the Saints wanted against the run of play. It's been five in a row for the Gold Coast. Dunstan to the square, going back. Adam Saad. Well, he That's takes right. it on. He takes the game on. He runs away from Loney. Two bounces. Great play. Long ball out to the wing. Spoil comes or Sexton marks. Good grab from Sexton. Oh, Saad kept going. He was just a bit overexcited, and that's a high tackle and all. That'll deflate them. Yeah, that was unfortunate because the crowd was just generating so much energy for the players, and it's uh, killed it. Well, they got Stephen forward by himself. Yep. They were way there, the Gold Coast. That was straight down the corridor, Rather perhaps go. to get it to 17. Day with the spoil. Hallahan tried to squeeze the kick through. Saad, this time by hand, he hits Mark. Now Chesky's running for him. There's no one. He's going to go long into space. He's going to hope that he's got a fast forward in Harley Bennell. He has. He gets away from Dempster, gets the trip. He thinks about playing on. He Time off. He wanted to. This, with four and a half minutes remaining, gets it to 17 points. And there's a sniff. Remember in Cairns a couple of years ago, the Gold Coast Suns came from way Kicked three back. goals in the last minute and a half. That's right, to win that game. Uh, the twist. The twist, Jared. The twist. This one's got to go through, it's, obviously. It's got to go straight through. It's a little uncomfortable in the Saints coaches' Well, box. they'd be more than a little. I think they uh, made a mistake going forward when they had control on the outer side. Bennell for six in oh. a row. He's missed it. Left side. Left side again. Big How's that? left all night. Well, this is all about possession now. Just get it, play on, hit somebody on the chest. 26 scoring shots to 23 in favour of the Suns. Miss some set shots. 10-16. 15-8. Well, that would have got it back to the middle. Three goals required. And the crowd would have been up and about. That is, de that is absolutely deflating for the crowd. And all the Saints have to do here is hold ball. Is ball. Just maintain possession. Just flustered a little bit. Uh, Dunstan, he's clear now. They just need a mark up forward from one of their big fellas. It might come in a minute. Weller. Sinclair, he's going to get it. This will ice the game. Jack Sinclair around the corner, gets his second. They've been waiting for that goal just to finish the Suns off once and for all. Good mark from memory. Or well, actually dropped it, but good positioning. And this kick to a dangerous position. Hard to believe uh, the shot missed at the other end of the ground. Oh, yeah. And it, once again, it comes back to what we uh, talked about on the couch last week about the 50 metre penalty for tripping. Yep. It used to be a rule, it should be still a rule, and that one would have been absolute because it would have been on the line, but nevertheless, that's for another day. 
That side that's worked the hardest for the longest would appear now to be safe, Matthew. Yes, two for the Jack of Diamonds, Jack Sinclair. And that's uh, enough now for the Saints. And they will be ruining what might have been. Still had a long way to go, but at least they would have got it back to the middle. Well, they started to square up the numbers. Those important numbers around contested possessions. They're actually plus nine, the Gold Coast Suns, over St Kilda now. But again, when it really counted and the game was on... They just missed their set shots. They just missed critical set shots in the third term. And Lock were smashed in contested possessions in the second. Six goals, ten for the second half. Bennell with the culprit for the last one. Ablett. Tough one for Martin to mark. Sam Fisher comes through, touched off the boot. Tape. Well, he backed himself to grab it and go. Hallahan into the pocket. Bennell, and just enough from Delaney to push it over. But a couple of games for the Saints looking ahead, as we looked at before, that yep. I feel um, very competitive about. Absolutely. This has been a most impressive display by St Kilda. It's early days in the season, but if they can keep uh, this group together, and they've got a few out with injury, it's got to be said, which lessened expectations, but it's the work rate of this group in particular that will make them uh, challenge most. Isn't it exciting when you see a group like the Saints, like the Bulldogs, who... Like Melbourne last week. ...who have come off uh, very low expectations and hit the season running. Yeah, they, you know, they challenged the Giants last week, got, got themselves to a winning position, just yeah. didn't finish it off didn't with finish. skills. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, plenty to like about this team. And if this is the work rate that they dish up week in, week out, you'd be happy as a St Kilda supporter to go along and watch. Yep. Hallahan. Getting some running repairs. Stephen just held, uh, Ablett just holding Stephen's jumper there. Not seen by the umpire. Billy Longer come under a little bit of criticism last week about his, his work rate. Oh, he's uh, especially sensational. his spread yeah. from the midfield to cover the opposition Ruckman. And we spoke about how Zach Smith was putting it on a silver platter early for the Suns, as he does there again. But Billy Longer's uh, work rate from these contests has been first class. Oh, Ablett, uh, not Ablett, uh, sorry, Garlett did everything right. He was away, just didn't quite have possession before he started to run. Martin marks that. He looks a fine, doesn't he, Jack yeah. Martin? It's a hell of a player. Oh, oh. Now Chesky's going to go straight up the middle. Miller towards Lynch. Just didn't quite get his jump right. Might have been helped out too with a yeah. push. Spiral kick away. Membry. Ablett there. Membry has a second go. Curran closed down by tape. Armitage loved his game. 33rd disposal for him and Nunes just slowing it down as we approach the last minute of the game. Big challenge for Rocket though, when you consider they've started uh, the year in horrible circumstances with two losses. They could have, uh, were expected to win. They've lost Jaeger O'Meara for the year. Harbrow could be in trouble, scans Harbrow on Monday. could be in trouble. We've had uh, one of the young kids, Sumner, retire because he's lost interest in the game. Yeah, and some real concerns. And then Nick Rewalt goes off for the last 60 seconds of the game. He'd be extremely satisfied with his uh, work today, as his coach certainly would be. Inside the last minute. Armitage um, still going. Just Stephen very tired over the line. Skipper's gone to the bench. Brought and overran it. Dunstan didn't. And Sinclair just came and got it out of it. Just picked it up off the ground and wanted it more. Armitage again, right. Jack in the box, right? Spring everywhere. Well, this Speaking kid hasn't stopped running. Yep. And hits that beautifully. That's a wonderful kick. Lynch got to beat a couple just with his foot, just kept control of it. Now with his hands trying to get it over to Miller. Through everybody, Sexton. Lynch kept going and then just dropped it. He's kicked three goals, Lynch. You know, 
if he's on song, he kicks six. Yeah, that's right. He had a couple of, he should have taken early. Yeah. A couple of uh, poor shots as well, but he's worked his way back into the game. As this man did. Nice. Josh Bruce, and why wouldn't he have the footy at the end of the game? Six goals to him, a personal best, a wonderful performance, and a great team performance by the Saints. They're on the board in 2015. And what a win. And our expectations up here were about, uh, and we heard from both coaches actually, it was about work rate. Yep. And whoever dished that up early in the game was going to run out winners or sustain it for a a majority of the game I see Mav Weller shaking hands with a few of his ex-teammates but he'd be very happy with uh, his team his current team the St Kilda Football Club they were very very good and sustained it for a majority of the yeah, game. Yeah it was exciting stuff and uh, what a way for Sammy Fisher who's had his own challenges in the last couple of years to come back and uh, play his 200th game there is uh, one bloke at the end of his career or getting close to it one at the finish at the start and both were most important in today's result and one that we just thoroughly enjoyed watching today josh bruce here he is with barry yeah thanks Manny. well the star of today no doubt josh bruce you've been throwing a roll down forward and it just looks so comfortable down there yeah i really enjoying my footy at the moment license to kind of run, run a lump, jump of the ball and um don't have to follow someone around which is nice so um use my running ability and just glad we got over the line for chipper Obviously, it's the 200th game, so yeah, the boys did well. Have you played much forward as a, as a junior? It just seems to come so natural to you. Yeah, yeah, I did. I played most of my footy as a junior, and then obviously when I went to GWS, they got some pretty talented forwards. So, um, applied my craft down the back line for a couple of years, and um, yeah, they need someone up forward now at the moment. So, yeah. I'm sure Nick Rewald will be wrapped to have him beside you, but his leadership up there and, and guiding you through do's, don'ts and, and what to do down there must be pretty helpful. Oh, it's outstanding, yeah. He's uh, obviously a champion of the game and I've learned a lot from him in terms of leading patterns and work rate. I spy to work as hard as he does. Obviously, he's you know, probably the best in the comp, so, yeah. Just... Well, what was the focus coming into today? Tackle and pressure and the pressure around the footy was, was outstanding. Yeah, that's, that's our number one thing. If we apply good pressure and apply good tackles, then, you know, we've got a long way to get in the win and... Um, yeah, we did that today, so pretty happy. Outstanding performance today, well done. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, the Gold Coast Suns, in contrast, almost got themselves in a winning position. But the important thing for them is they didn't get themselves in a winning position when the game was there to be won at the start. And Tom Lynch addressing the players on this occasion. You saw Nick Malcheski, I think it was, at half time, just having a chat to the players. Obviously, extremely disappointed with the effort when it counted. Well, I'm pleased to see uh, somebody outside of Ablett, uh, Richard Talley or uh, any of the other top-line senior players uh, talking to the boys because it's going to need effort from the group of youngsters as much as it is going to uh, take a supreme effort from uh, Gary Ablett, who is uh, really just working back into his very own. Two games in, two losses, season's not over, but it's going to take a uh, significant effort from everybody in this footy club to drag them sells back into a competitive position. Well, there has been so much hype about the Suns over an extended period, and I think the expectations were, though, if they're not going to be in the finals, they're going to be real yeah. close and shape the finals. This, they've got to get that out of their mind totally because they've just got to focus on next week and make sure they dish up something that's, that you can take to finals. They're that far away from finals football at the moment. It's ridiculous. Six goals from Josh Bruce, but the best midfielder on the ground, probably the best man on the ground, David Armitage with Barry. He certainly was, Matty. And look, it was a great performance. Gold Coast had a, a little bit to prove today. Did you expect that sort of performance? You know what, mate? We, uh, we kind of did. Coming off last week against GWS, we had three really good quarters. Last quarter, we had belief in our legs and ran over the top of them. Um, then we watched a little bit of GWS today and what they did to Melbourne. And, you know, we just had real belief. And um, if we brought that effort for four quarters, that we knew that we, we could match them and in, in, in better them. So... That was the plan going in, and we had total belief, and we just had to apply it. It was a little bit scary there in the last quarter, but uh, yeah, it was good, mate. Great win, got the job done. The guy that's really impressed me is, is Billy Longer in the centre there. He's just a, an old-fashioned ruckman. You must love having him in the middle. Yeah, I do, mate. He's, he is an old-fashioned ruckman. He, he bashes in, he crashes in. He's um, he's really good for us, and you know he he came back in pre-season. He wasn't in the best shape, and you know the boys really got up him, and and, and he really turned it around, and, and, and he's become you know he's pushed Hickey out of the ruck and. You know, he's been really good for us, so he's elite today. You've been around the club for a long, long time. Ups and downs, and there's, you've been for a hell of a lot. Yeah. It must be a really good feeling around the club at the moment. It is, mate. And all these young guys that we're signing and, and, and they're committing, and, you know, they're just showing on the track that they're really capable. And, you know, it's, it's wins like this, and they know what to, you know, they, how, they, how they believe, believe in, in our game plan, and that's all we got to do. And they were terrific today, Baz. Great result today. Go and enjoy it. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. I think Barry makes a good point. They've only got five players out there that played 100 games. Yeah. yeah. 
very very young developing list and I think uh, I think the expectations are it's going to take a few years to, to challenge for premierships again as you see Rodney Ede with Malcolm Blight Marcus Ashcroft there as well and uh, Steve Wilson the media manager and they're just going through how they're going to address this probably the press conference to start with and address the players once they enter the the rooms yeah you've got to get the messaging right and there's some pretty uh, experienced old heads there, premiership coaches for Malcolm Blight. He's been uh, through the ringer himself uh, many, many times. Rodney Ede's been there, been through the ringer, had slow starts in uh, other clubs and uh, has uh, resurrected years. And that's what they're going to need to do. Start with one step, get to the training session, get everybody back together and uh, keep the group together and get on with uh, a competitive effort next week, which hopefully turns into four points. Tough contract though down at uh, absolutely it is but uh, Cat Park you don't want uh, an easy four points everything's tough for this group at, at the, the moment, moment while yep. they're playing yep absolutely back on onto the Saints I mean you, you're wondering where what players are going to step up and as you said um, Armitage has been there for about six or uh, probably seven or eight years yeah. now he looks like he's more consistent in delivering those sort of efforts Shane Savage as you said yep. was probably the steak knives in the trade with Hawthorne he's backed up with two very yeah. good games yeah. at the start of this season. Those knives like are sharp. They, they're, they're sharp, sharp yeah. right up. Sharp Stephen's up. obviously a good player. The, the poison and composure of Dunstan with ball in hand. Yeah. Shenton looks good. Mav Weller's reinvented himself yes. as a, a lockdown uh, run with player. Sinclair, Billings. I think a, a Loney, Loney's another one. That like Loney. He showed a lot, with whether it's with the ball in hand or when trying to get it back. So I think there's a lot to like about the St Kilda outfit. And I think uh, there's plenty to go and watch over the uh, the coming weeks as they, they they'll give some real headaches to opposition teams. Yeah, and, and down back they had I mean Delaney's been doing a quiet job rather than Fisher was terrific in that second yeah. quarter with 12 disposals. But you had Dempster, Delaney, Fisher just doing their job, yeah. and uh, you know one on the day or one on the night. Well, Delaney's an important player because over in recent years, as we see Sam Fisher. They carried from the ground in game 200, and as you said, pre-game, two times best and fairest winner, an All-Australian defender yep. as well. And great to see him return to some really good form. Yep. And he'd be very proud, not about, you know, so much you know, his performance tonight, but they can win against what has been touted as quality opposition. And he sees these young players come through, so he can see the succession plan. Saw him uh, and Jack Stevens earlier today at Broadbeach, and they were uh, just sitting quietly having a coffee. And they expected this. They were uh, not underselling themselves, not trying to shy away from the pressure. They were absolutely expecting to have a crack at singing the song after the match. And we'll say goodnight. Saints by 28. Fox Sports Network.